Princess, Nikki Graham. And their captain, John Locke. And facing them tonight, the Boy Wonder, it's Boy George. The Mac is back, Lee Mack. And their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Powell. Hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, scientists say the elephant is the only mammal that can't jump? What, Stephen Hawking isn't a mammal? <laughs> Only a quarter of Brits consider themselves to be lucky, and they're the lucky ones. <laughs> a cockroach can live for a whole week without a head. Beat that, Heather Mills. <laughs> Let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation <coughs> and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean, Nikki, Rich, what have the nation been talking about this week? Jimmy, <laughs> turtles can't jump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just wanted to go back to a point you made. Uh, turtles don't jump. They do if you throw them on a trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think people have probably been talking about Madonna adopting a baby in Africa. Uh, she's adopted a baby, scores a lot of fuss. Well, he has kind of won the orphanage lottery, hasn't he? <laughs> I imagine if they had a regular lottery <laughs> in the or orphanage, they had a scratch cards, they went, oh, you're going to be saved by Madonna. <laughs> he should have been disqualified yeah. earlier because he wasn't an orphan. It was like an African orphan idol. <laughs> she noted into the last 12, she went over for the final, which was this last week. <laughs> It was some sort of contest, like a Bonnie Baby contest. Went to the local war with in Malawi, had the picture <laughs> saying all that. But he should have been disqualified because he's not an orphan. The kid's it not an orphan. It does seem weird that he's got a dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've been saying in the press that the, the saddest thing about it is the fact that he's going to be in the papers every day. So that Madonna and Guy won't get the luxury that other adoptive parents have, which is to tell him exactly what happened in their own time. But I can't help thinking from a very early age he's going to realise, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine he's going to get to like 10 or 11 and go, uh, listen, something's not right here. <laughs> Mum, Dad, two questions. One, are you my real parents? And two, how come there's no mirrors in this house? <laughs> I thought it was quite funny. She bought him a £5,000 rocking horse. I'd really like to see that comic relief appeal with it. Just £5,000 and get a rocking horse for a child in Africa. <laughs> the other thing she did was she decorated his room in a jungle style. <laughs> it's true, that's a questionable taste, I think. Why don't she just adopt, like, uh, 60,000 orphan kids and then... She's Total sellout wherever she goes. <laughs> that is thinking, Rich. They don't know that American Pie is a fucking cover. <laughs> You're still angry about American Pie? <laughs> I was angry about it the first time I heard it. I need her to trot it out again 20 years later. All 73 verses. But I'll tell you something else. Snakes can't jump. <laughs> Madonna can't sing. Madonna can't sing. <laughs> What do you think of Madonna? She's a bit high maintenance. I like her, but to be honest, a whole week's news on her adopting the child. Oh. Who cares? <laughs> God, you're a big brother. <laughs> So were you looking for more news about what was going on in Kazakhstan this week? I'm not getting the bottom of this, just Madonna, Madonna, Madonna. <laughs> but you've managed to get more attention than Madonna in a very short space of time, so you're more fabulous. Oh, thanks, boy, George. I thought, you know, her performance at Live 8 was when she was swearing. I thought, well, that's not a very good, you know, example to set to your kids, because she actually showed it at Live 8, she went on the stage and said, are you fucking ready? I think, that's what she's going to be like on the school run. <laughs> <laughs> are you fucking ready, Lord? <laughs> No, no, she's, 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 she's an English lady now. She's an English lady. Yeah. She's fooling no one. <laughs> the fellow, Jimmy, don't you claim to be Irish? <laughs> I don't claim, I try and hide it, mate. How <laughs> dare you? Huh? I'm Irish. I'm about as Irish as you. I'm more Irish than you'll ever be. What? what? Well, go on then. <laughs> <laughs> I will kind of go down a back where I share the hell I talk to fuck a little shit about the love. Pogue he Mahone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, let's have a look and see if Madonna's adoption is one of the most talked about things this week. 
Yes, it is. Yes, Madonna's caused controversy by adopting a baby from Africa. The baby's father described the adoption as a blessing from God, although the exact translation of the Malawi is the fucking jackpot get in. <laughs> Dave, Paul, George, Lee, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Could it possibly be uh, the allegations that Heather Mills McCartney has made in the divorce paper saying that Sir Paul was cruel to her? Every night she has to go to bed to go to the toilet. And she has to crawl because he won't allow her a bedpan. But he said he didn't want a bedpan in the bedroom because it was like, it was like a, an old people's home. <laughs> it is an old people's home. <laughs> it's 64. It's... Don't explain it to her, Sean, if she doesn't get it. <laughs> Heather's only got one leg. I don't know why I'm Shit. shouting it. But... <laughs> Sorry, Nikki, you, you know who Heather Mills is, yeah? I don't know. I know she's married to Paul McCartney. I wasn't aware she only had one leg. Where have you been? <laughs> she's been in a house. <laughs> To do something to get the public sympathy back in her favour. Maybe a parrot. <laughs> well, I think people would warm to her if she had a parrot. <laughs> a proper job. Go to Vegas, work at Treasure Island. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether Heather Mills' allegations are one of the most talked about things this week. Yes, newspapers have reported Heather Mills' allegations that Paul McCartney hit her. Heather is going through a very rough time at the moment, and if she were here, I would tell her, time heals all wounds. <laughs> well, not that, you'd have to be a starfish. <laughs> In other divorce news this week, Stephen Hawking is leaving his wife. Hawking's marriage lasted 11 years before the wheels came off. <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy, can I stop you a second? Nicky, he's in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. Thanks. Sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> Do you know who Stephen Hawking is? <laughs> <laughs> he's sort of the cleverest man in the world but he's, he's kind of confined to a wheelchair. <laughs> Most people that come on the show have a really good time. It's really, it's a fun thing. It's great, but you're learning so much. It's an <laughs> extra learning. This is like being at school for me. <laughs> right, Sean Nick Inrich, what else have people been talking about this week? Oh, post offices closing down. Small <laughs> <laughs> post offices. Do you know what a post office is? <laughs> My mum's a postie, I'll have you know. <laughs> One of those little yellow square pieces of paper. <laughs> Did the postmaster deliver a petition with four million names on it yeah. to 10 Downing Street? I like the fact that they delivered, hand delivered it because they don't trust the postal service. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I think they should do is what they do with libraries. They have mobile, like they have mobile post offices, and they can be like ice cream vans. <laughs> and they drive around and they play some, some music to attract old people. <laughs> like, we'll meet again, like <laughs> ding, 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 <laughs> ding, 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 <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> ding, like ding. Band. Yes, like a, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, just about a minute behind. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I just really hope that when these postal workers, when they went to Downing Street, there was a thousand of them, I really hope there was just one person serving at Downing Street and they had to make a big long queue. <laughs> and he said, like, protest to number three, please. <laughs> 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 Let's have a look and see whether post offices are up there. Uh, Dave Seen, what else have the nation been talking about? I love this um, great story that apparently David Blunkett once told um, a police <coughs> governor to machine gun the prisoners. <laughs> I think that's great. He, he thinks our warders have machine guns. He's, and he's blind. Better tell Nicky. Uh, Blow the gap. Yeah. <laughs> Nicky. He's what? blind, he's got a dog. And the dog oh, helps. you're winding me up. <laughs> <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> talk about tonight is afflicted in some yes. <laughs> Well, as it happens, yeah. It's different people, though. It's not the one person. So. <laughs> <laughs> OK, t t tell me more. Tell me more about Blunkett's. So, yeah, the there was, I don't know. There was this riot, and he phoned the governor, and they said they've got their home secretary on the phone for you, and he's having a riot, and he went, oh, machine gun them. And, and he obviously went, are you pissed? <laughs> no, machine gun them. Could have just pretended to do it, because Blunkett wouldn't have known, would he? He could have gone, <laughs> There you go, all dead, all of them. It's like a holiday camp prison. <laughs> no, it ain't. It is. <laughs> when you were in Big Brother and they didn't have bottled water, you went mental. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even have a jacuzzi, many of these places. I didn't go in the jacuzzi because it was filth ridden. Well, fair enough then, maybe you'll be fine in prison. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same week that we find out that prisoners are being paid to play board games. I mean, I was in prison once and I uh, played Scrabble, I nearly got bummed. Um, <laughs> but I only had one M. Only 
Let's have a look and see if Blunkett's up there. <laughs> yes, it's been revealed that David Blunkett ordered prison chiefs to machine gun rioters in 2002. Luckily, he was shouting into a stapler. <laughs> One more to get fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it anything to do with this teacher who uh, refused to remove her veil and was suspended? So why, why do you need to sit? Leave her alone. Why, why do you have to... That's enough, isn't it? But the thing was, she, she doesn't wear it when the kid's in the room. She only wears it when a male comes into the room. So she goes, she'll have it off, and like that bloke comes, and she goes, whoop. <laughs> and then he'll go out, she goes, whoop. <laughs> in and out. She should just get, like, a Venetian blind. <laughs> 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 Problem solved. <laughs> Quite handy them veils if you were talking to somebody who you didn't like, who you thought were an idiot. But you put on like that and your eyes would be going like that and, you, and your face would be going like, Is that what Jack Straw's really worried about? <laughs> yeah. That everyone that comes to visit him is going, uh. <laughs> you idiot, Jack Straw. Uh. <laughs> Nicky, Jack Straw is a, a headless politician. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't even say. But no Made head. <laughs> Made of straw. <laughs> the next one's going to be an exhumed corpse. <laughs> <laughs> she done a funny. <laughs> Mind you, you can't walk round Mecca in a tutu, can you? That sounds like an old Cockney song. You can't walk round Mecca in a tutu. <laughs> <laughs> you can wear a skirt to walk around Mecca, but you could dress up as a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> or, um... Well, that's the, that's the group that we really haven't heard much from in this whole yeah. debate. Yeah. The ninjas haven't said anything. Yeah. Right, let's have a look and see whether the veils are up there. <laughs> yes, this week, the Muslim teacher suspended for wearing a veil received a lot of support. She was delighted, or surprised, or touched. It's hard to tell. <laughs> At the end of that round, Sean's team have two points. Dave's team are in the league with three points. The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. 5% of Brits would like to see David and Victoria Beckham what? What about penniless? <laughs> <laughs> is it part of the peacekeeping force in Basra? <laughs> Ask forgiveness from Christ. <laughs> <laughs> No, live a week in a third world country. Well, you, do you know what? I'm, I'm tempted to give you that. That's dangerously close to the correct answer. It's well, to do I with never. that. It's to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, no one was expecting you to be right. <laughs> UN ambassadors. That's the correct there answer. Yes, 5% of Brits would like to see David and Victoria Beckham become UN ambassadors. Personally, I don't think Victoria should be sent to visit starving people. They've got enough problems without feeling fat. <laughs> OK, 68% of chess players think chess would be more popular if what? If the game wasn't so bloody damn boring. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, I'll bet when they were asked that question, it took them 45 fucking minutes to figure up an answer. <laughs> I've always liked the big chess that you get. I think if they were really big, yeah. they were really massive, and you had to use a crane to play. Yeah. And the world champion was a crane driver from Catford called Big Rod. <laughs> Maybe it was a cross-country event. How do you mean, Rich? You know, move a piece, run ten miles. <laughs> move another piece, run another ten miles. <laughs> oh, check me. Yeah, it's a great idea. I'm with Rich on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had some shouts. You know, when you moved, you had some calls. Like, you know, in football, people shout and scream. When you moved, you went, Yeah, I'm going to get you, boy! <laughs> I've only had two chess games in my life. I bet you didn't win, then. <laughs> I lost. Did you lose both of them? Yes. Really? <laughs> Did you have trouble getting the pieces over the net? Very <laughs> hilarious. I almost fell off my chair laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Nicky Graham, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be you right about now, Sean. <laughs> That's my career over. <laughs> <laughs> if it was easier. That's the right answer, Sean. If it was easier. Yeah, that's what... <laughs> yes. 68% of chess players think chess would be more popular if it was easier. I think chess is easy. There's only two things you have to remember. Don't use the St Petersburg gambit against the Brandenburg opening and the horsey go jumpy jump. <laughs> so at the end of that round, it's three points for Sean, Nicky and Rich and four points for Dave, Lee and George. 
Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I'll give the panellists a simple statement and all they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Sean, Nicky and Rich, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. Let's meet act number six, dancer Todd Rickson. You've done it, have you? Yeah. Oh, I think he's done a hamstring there, you're right. <laughs> Come on, mate. The bit after he snaps his hamstring is how I dance normally. <laughs> Here is your related statistic. 16% of talent show applicants say they would be prepared to lose a finger for a shot at fame. Is that true or false? Is that an actual question that you would ask a talent show applicant? I think it's halfway it. through the act. People just go, I'll just chop your finger off. Do something. <laughs> I do it. What I do is I chop it off and stick like that and put the finger out my ear like that. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> or, or you could wrap it around your neck and use it to point at things. <laughs> <laughs> it's just around the corner, just over there. It's funny outside the X Factor auditions, though, going down the back, <laughs> block with a big bag, going, fingers, my fingers, <laughs> fingers, come on, you, just bend in that. Fingers, come on. Do you know it's illegal to chop your finger off? Because it means you're not fit for military service. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> How did you come across that nugget of information? People tell me things and they stay in. Did you hear that, Nikki? Yeah. I wasn't listening. <laughs> of course you weren't. Do you think there's an escalating scale of what, you, what limbs you have to lose to gain a certain degree of fame? Like Heather McCartney. She lost a whole leg. Did but she made a fortune. <laughs> What's his name? Lost his eyesight. Blunkett. <laughs> These are all things Nikki learned in part one. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? 16% of talent show applicants say they would be prepared to lose a finger for a shot at fame. True or false? False. OK, I can tell you that the answer is in fact true. Oh. Shit. All right, calm down. Well done. <laughs> Not a lot of people, though, is it? Not a well, I mean, it's quite mental, isn't it? 16% would go, yeah, I'll have a finger off just to sing for Simon Cow. Of course, once they've done it, they'll have to tend to fuck off like this. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, George and Lee, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. Ring My Bell is a show in which you, the viewer, get to do the talking. Qualified receptionists are right here to take your call and put you through to either Arthur Scargill, Boy George, Barbara Windsor, or Tony James, the founder of Zig Zig Sputnik. Let's go for a quick booth hop just to show you how this extravaganza works. Half a buttock and one right boob. Hey, did, did, did you show that right, boob? I didn't see yes, that just, one. Yes, just you got to you got to look very quickly. You oh, blink, you miss it. Was, 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 was that in the one with, with the um, toothpaste? What? No, that was camping. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I missed that one. Anyway, you take care. Oh, you bet I will. Oh, I love. God bless you. Love darling. to see your tits. Bye, love. Bye, bye. bye. <laughs> love to see your tits. Bye. <laughs> Here is your related statistic: thirty-eight percent of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Is that true or false? Bollocks. <laughs> well, they can't find my details. I give them my customer reference. I give them my data, my postcode, my blood group. They can't find... Fuck <laughs> off. The people that do the cold calling, you know, that ring you, I think that helps their love life, cos I always say, go and get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> but some people do sound more sexy on the phone. <laughs> yeah, often people phone me up and they say, can we interest you in double glazing? Like, no, but you can certainly take me out to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had phone sex? Fantastic. <laughs> I like the fact you know when the call's over. <laughs> and your mum walks in the room. Yeah. <laughs> she can't walk in the room, she's on the phone. <laughs> you know, in America, all the sex lines start with 900. And uh, the, the area code for Western Tennessee is 901. So you must get a lot of people in Western Tennessee just getting a misstyle call. What am I wearing? Overalls. <laughs> <laughs> My daddy's right here. Earl, it's for you. <laughs> All right. 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Is that true or false? No, I think yes. We think yes. We, we think, think it's yeah. probably right. true. Okay. I can tell you that the answer is true. 
Yes. Yes, 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Call centres are weird things. Yeah, I need to go from Coventry to Ipswich on Saturday. I better call someone in Bangladesh. They'll know. <laughs> <laughs> So at the end of that round, it's three points for Sean's team and five points for Dave's team. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to be giving the teams a series of opinion polls and surveys. It's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Top thing that annoys women. Is it when you get really drunk and piss in the wardrobe in the middle of the night? <laughs> when you wipe your knob on the curtains. <laughs> what, do you, what annoys you? To be honest, I'm not a good person to ask because everything. <laughs> 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 what annoys my wife, and women, I think in general, is they, they say, What pair of shoes out of the 27 pairs you've got goes with this skirt? As if you're a fucking expert on shoes. <laughs> yeah, the problem is, Dave, is your wife's shoes all stink of piss. <laughs> <laughs> It annoys women. It's when you put a new toilet roll on a toilet roll holder and you make the paper come off near the wall oh. instead of like away from yeah. the wall. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. It's really apparent. What do you do that for? He's got, he's got brushed knuckles on the wall now. <laughs> you were very close, Sean. You take the last piece and you don't think, ah, oh, shit, no. You stick that last piece back on, don't you? That one. <laughs> put that one back on, then it doesn't look as though I've used the whole loo roller. That's great. She's got to change it. That's the correct answer. Yes, the top thing that annoys women is finishing the last loo roll. Here's one for you. Top reason to celebrate. You found some booze. <laughs> yeah. Hey! Didn't know I had this. <laughs> Rich, what do you celebrate? Not being Canadian. <laughs> oh, I know! Jesus Christ, don't do that! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, quite a life out of me. It's a funeral. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> no, I tell you Unbelievable. Why. You only go to funerals with people you don't like. <laughs> I've been to one. <laughs> I've never been invited back. I've been invited back to funerals. <laughs> oh, I've been to one funeral. I didn't get invited back. <laughs> <laughs> Same job again next year, then. <laughs> <laughs> Engagement. That's a correct answer. Right. Yes, the top reason to celebrate is an engagement. Second on the list is discovering that the kid's not yours and you don't have to marry the slag. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Nikki, and Rich have five points, but the winners are Dave, George, and Lee with six points. to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Mastermind, Piers Morgan, our friend in the north, Jason Manford, and their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, here's your host, Jimmy Carr. Hello, and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys, and statistics. Did you know, for example, a giraffe can clean its own ears with its 21 inch long tongue? Although Mrs. Giraffe has got other plans for this evening. <laughs> 3% of Brits never leave a tip, and they're known as the weirdos that live at the tip. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was less like a laugh, that was more like a rumour going around the room. <laughs> Have you heard about the people at the tip? 
<laughs> and you've got a 1 in 20,000 chance of being murdered in the UK. We don't know what the figure is for Iraq. We sent a guy over there to do the survey and he hasn't come back. <laughs> Let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellists' job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave, Pierce, Jason, what have the nation been talking about this week? Is it more revelations in the McCartney divorce proceedings? All that business rumbles oh, on, doesn't I'll it? I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to be the fellow that introduced them. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. <laughs> I introduced Heather Mills to Paul McCartney. Why? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what he's asking. She's a, don't you think she's awful, Heather Mills? Now, I actually oh, yeah. quite stick up for it, but it's awful, isn't it? Yeah. But he's Paul McCartney. You know, he wrote yesterday. She's Heather Mills. And today, a... and he'll probably write tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he's a relentless worker. <laughs> I think, though, well, I think the obvious thing, though, is, is that mostly when you meet a very beautiful woman, you see there's a catch. There must be a catch. It can't be this good. And he thought the catch was the leg. Oh, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but she's incredibly unpopular for someone with one leg. She's first, it's like Blunkett, isn't it? He's blind. You think people like him. Everyone thinks he's a prick. <laughs> I mean, you, you don't like her, do you? I have to stand up for her. People would say, why? And now you think, why? Well, because she know? couldn't stand up but, herself, right? But, 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 <laughs> When you think about it, she hasn't really done anything. What she's people greedy. forget, she's... we're all greedy. She's greedy. She had to hump that old man. He smells like dust. Aww. <laughs> right? This would never have happened to the Stones. None of the Stones would have ever married a one-legged nutter. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing he said was she threw a bottle of ketchup That's at him. Right. And he's still not got it out of his ear, has he? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that I like the way even celebrities can't have an argument without doing some product placement. You know, it's like, oh, he threw some Heinz ketchup at me. <laughs> and then he put some Marmite bottles in a sock and hit me over the head and tried to choke me with Jaffa cakes and spray Jiff in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I someone said the other day, who gets the leg? Because... No, more importantly, who gets a disabled parking voucher? Well... <laughs> worth 10 million. We're <laughs> all polling here. Who's with Heather? <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. Uh, well, let's have a look and see whether Paul McCartney is up there. Oh. Yes, the McCartney divorce is getting increasingly bitter. Heather Mills has denied she's a fantasist in a statement released by her lawyer, Rumpole of the Bailey. <laughs> right, Sean, Kirsty, and Scott, what else have the nation been talking about this week? I think they've been talking about John Reid's come out tough again. He's tough on... Now he's tough on immigration. He's going to restrict the amount of Romanians and Bulgarians that can come here to work. Basically, loads of people... Loads of Polish people came over here two or three years ago and are doing, you know, doing all the jobs like cleaning and yeah, building. They're giving, they're giving British labourers a bad name, aren't they? Because they're efficient, on time, <laughs> cheap, <laughs> polite. It's a disgrace. They, they should all be sent home. It's disgusting. <laughs> They can have a thousand pound fine, aren't they, for any Bulgarians caught working? Well, all they have to do is put on a posh accent, don't they? They learn to speak very posh English. They say, Are you Bulgarian? Of course I'm not. Don't be so ridiculous, man. <laughs> How do you think I got this job? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you. I, I only employ Eastern Europeans if I can possibly do so because they just do the job and work hard. Do you run a brothel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have a look and see if this is one of the most talked about things of the week? <laughs> hey! Yes, indeed it is. Right, Dave's team, what else have the nation been talking about this week? I think it's probably the news that the Allied forces are considering a timetable for withdrawal of troops from Iraq. Because we've sorted it, isn't it? It's all right, no? <laughs> <laughs> we went in as liberators, they, they assured us. Liberate the Iraqi people, kill hundreds of thousands of them, cause complete mayhem in their country. It's almost as if this war has done you some sort of personal ill. It's <laughs> 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 not like. I got fired over it, all right? I'm pretty bitter about it. Uh, I think we should leave, because the whole story has gotten so depressing. <laughs> 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 We're going to just get in there and whoosh and 
raise the roof and bring in some hip hop and leave. But that is so messy, you know. All the language they use that like, we're leaving Iraq like it's some sort of relationship. Oh, it, it's, it's not you, it's me, you know. I, mean, I, I love you, but I'm just not in love with you, you know. I, I just think it'd be a great way of, uh, you know, of, of leaving your girlfriend. I mean, obviously, you'd have to hide that 12 to 18 month timetable. Uh, you know, they're like, oh, it's routine. Uh, but I think that'd be great. Obviously, she'd see it go, oh, what's this in May? You're going to start acting like a dickhead, so I leave you. All right. Uh, <laughs> and then the question, of course, is uh, just when you invade her sister. I mean, Iran. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we saw in George W. Bush's eyes when he sort of spoke over the last couple of days. I, I don't think he knows what's going on. I don't think he's happening. got the attention span for a war no. this long. No, I think you're on. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have a look and see if Iraq is one of the most talked about things this week. Yes, it is. Yes, this is the story that British and American forces are under increasing pressure to leave Iraq. Blair denied he was clutching at straws as he launched Operation Straw Clutch. <laughs> Sean's team, uh, what else have people been talking about this week in the news? Is it the news the NHS are going to refuse to treat smokers unless they give up smoking? Which is uh, uh, obviously a thin end of the wedge situation. You know, if you've got gunshot wounds, they'll ask you to leave the Mafia. Or, like, if you're a Top Gear presenter and you can't control a jet car... <laughs> ..they'll say, no more petrol for you. <laughs> you idiot. Poor bloke. Am I the only one who wishes it was Jeremy Clarkson? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Just cos he hit you once, don't cry. <laughs> he hit me three times and it didn't hurt, all right? Did he hit you three times? Because it was a... What, yeah, that at? That's the scar there. Is that the, the, um, you've got a scar? It, yeah, and um, we kept running stories on the mirror about him cavorting with women who weren't Mrs Clarkson. And eventually he cornered me at the British Press Awards and smacked me three times in the head. <laughs> and uh, after the third one, I went, is that...? That <laughs> <laughs> got a smattering of a <laughs> Well done. Well done, well, Jeremy. It's quite ironic, really, because I, I didn't hit him back because I thought I'd be sacked. And then three weeks later, I was sacked anyway. <laughs> They, uh, I like the, this idea that they're going to refuse smokers' uh, operations. And a few weeks back, it was uh, fat people. Anybody who's obese or fat... No, don't take it personally, mate. All right, no, that's <laughs> right. There's a reason you get punched. Jotting <laughs> <laughs> that down, my friend. So, Piers, do you think the NHS should treat people that smoke? Uh, no. People that smoke should just be shot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why not? That's, that's, a, that's a vote for a police state. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it would make smoking a lot more exciting. Exactly. <laughs> I tell you, sales of mints would go through the fucking roof. <laughs> I can tell you, the NHS not treating smokers is not one of the top five stories oh, this week, but what? it was in the papers. OK, fingers on buzzers. Uh, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it uh, Wayne Rooney and his new uh, £100,000 mega deal with Manchester United? I love the way that every time Wayne Rooney gets a new deal, we see a picture within 24 hours of Colleen yeah. grinning her head off with 27 <laughs> bags of shopping. <laughs> I've got to say, she's earned it. Yeah. <laughs> But the, the problem with these deals is they, that, that then it launches all these people going, oh, they get paid too much. Uh, but and then the footballers counter up by saying, yeah, but the fans, they're always shouting nasty things at me. And you're like, for 100 grand a week, I'd stay in the middle of the pitch at Wembley for two weeks and let you shout nasty things at me. <laughs> but you're not bad. Yeah, I don't know. One, <laughs> two, three. Hello, can I get an account balance, please? Your mum's a knobhead, yeah, but you should see her house. <laughs> <laughs> She bought him a £30,000 watch for his birthday and a Louis Vuitton man bag and a gold set from Argos. <laughs> <laughs> you can take the girl out of Liverpool, but you can't get the catalogue off her, can you? <laughs> she also got him a picture of Robbie Williams' <laughs> arse. He's, a, he's, doing a, he's doing a Mooney, yeah. and there's a danger that he'll mistake it for a mirror, yeah. isn't there? <laughs> I thought it was a portrait because the eye kept following him around the room. <laughs> she got all these brilliant people, Mike Tyson, to sign things, you two, and Blue. <laughs> They're not even together, are they? A Blue not together? <laughs> oh, sorry, Jimmy. Oh, what a way to hear it. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Wayne Rooney's up there. Yes, it is. Yes. Wayne Rooney turned 21 this week. He received an Aston Martin, priceless sporting memorabilia and a £30,000 watch. I tell you what, though, he would have been happier with a tyre and a rope. <laughs> <laughs> he 
We've got one more thing to guess. Fingers on buzzers. What else? Sean. Is it the uh, Richmond Council's decision to charge four by fours lots of money to park? Tell me more about this. What do you think of it? I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't live in London. Yeah. And I like it. You like it? Yes. Well, that's fine, then. <laughs> they're the most privileged people in society, usually people who have four by fours, and then suddenly they're a victim. It's like, why are they picking on me? <laughs> Just because I've got a four by four. I think it should be more. It should be a thousand pounds. <gasps> Fuck them. Oh. <laughs> that's that's fair enough. Yeah. But you, but the, you get let off the fine and all that, but they're encouraging these electric cars. Tell me again, how do you make electricity? It's not exactly a clean fuel, is it? The way they make electricity, <laughs> those big power stations, there's thousands of blokes with full heads of hair and balloons going like that. <laughs> 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 Just thousands of them. Dwarves. It's funny about dwarves. Thousands of dwarves. <laughs> balloons. <laughs> I think they should call it, um, you know, they've got names for these taxis that they, that they put in. They should just call it the Wanker Tax. <laughs> and, uh, That's a bit hard. I know. They, they should right. put that more easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's 2-0, two, two <laughs> dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm defending now. the pregnant lady. <laughs> I started it. No, I, like, <laughs> I like the fat guy. Go on. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a pub car park. <laughs> Leave it, it's not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if the new 4x4 tax is one of the most talked about things. Mm. Yes, it is. <laughs> OK, well, I can tell you, at the end of that round, Sean's team have two points, Dave's team have three Ooh. points. <laughs> the next round is called The Poll with a Hole. Here's your first question. The 17% of church leaders think if Jesus came back to Earth now, he would what? Be very old. <laughs> he definitely points out that the Da Vinci Code is a load of bollocks. <laughs> I didn't marry Mary Magdalene. Move to France. I hate France. <laughs> I think he'd be a bit too soapboxy. A little know it all y. Don't you think? No. Oh. <laughs> Clear what you're on about, Scott. <laughs> Do you think if he came back, he would be sectioned on the first day? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Jesus Christ. Right, come with us. <laughs> right, have a nice cup of tea and a sit down. <laughs> Who's to say I haven't come back? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, that is an exclusive. Of course, claiming to be Jesus is quite insulting to the Christians, but it doesn't really matter. They don't take it that seriously. <laughs> they're, they're probably out there now thinking, if I get hold of that Sean Locke, I'm going to bloody well forgive him. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a clue on this one. It's, uh, it's, it's about his choice of vehicle. Uh, He'd have his own jet. He'd have hover boots. Mm. <laughs> Classic hippie-ish. Is it a VW, VW. van? Yeah. Exactly the right answer. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is 17% of church leaders think if Jesus came back to Earth now, he would drive a camper van. <laughs> I suppose it's better that Jesus Christ has a camper van rather than a Yamaha. You don't want him doing a skid and killing a kid and busting his balls on a dustbin lid. 20% <laughs> of Brits have sent a text message what? Is it 20% of Brits have sent a text message when really a bunch of flowers and a deepest sympathy card would have been more appropriate? <laughs> 20% of Brits have sent a text message playing the game Fuck You Roulette, uh, which is where you type fuck you into your text message and then just go through your contacts like that. Is <laughs> 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 it putting a kiss at the end of the message, then deleting it, then putting it back on again? Afterwards. Do you ever do that? No, I should. Yeah, I will. No, I won't. <laughs> I, I like it when you do, Dave. When the... <laughs> it's to do with uh, what you're wearing. Naked. Yeah. What do you mean, Correct. Scott? I mean... <laughs> Yes, correct. 20% of Brits have sent a text message whilst naked. I'm in the boot of a car, just gone over a bridge, I think I'm passing a quarry, sounds like an abattoir, send help, smiley face. <laughs> so at the end of that round, it is three points for Sean, Kirsty, and Scott, four points for Dave, Piers and Jason. Yeah. Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Mm -hmm. Dave, Piers and Jason, you're to go oh, first. Let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic.
Ah! <laughs> ah! So I thought she was going to do the old flicking towel on his yeah. arse. Yeah. <laughs> is that Piers? Is that you and Clarkson yeah. at the British Press <laughs> Here is your related statistic: twenty-three percent of fights in bars are caused by pub quizzes. Do you think that's true <laughs> or false? It's yeah. at least 23%. I mean, yeah, they're ideal, aren't they? Confrontation, pub quizzes are brilliant. Everybody goes in off happy and jolly, don't they? They think up really funny quiz team names up, don't they? Like, uh, Quiz Team Aguilera. That's my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> the worst one for my local pub quiz team is that the, the, uh, the, the quiz host, he looks like a massive, fat Elvis. And so our quiz team name is always, I look like a big, fat Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> so when he runs through the points... <laughs> to be honest, mate, <laughs> <laughs> Just had a, can you sing hand up or not? <laughs> it's hard being funny, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know, cos, like, you know when you get an answer right and it's really, really difficult, like, the other night I got this one and it said, what, in the human body, what's got a molecular weight of 164,458? And I knew it was haemoglobin. For somebody, anyway, I knew it was haemoglobin. <laughs> I used to work in hospital, and that's great. We one pot. Nobody else could possibly have got that one right. And then the quizmaster starts giving fucking clues out. Think of uh, maybe a homo goblin. <laughs> what? <laughs> never go at Scott in the middle of this. What <laughs> 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 sort of pub? Ask you the atomic weight of <laughs> hemoglobin. Are you, when having, you, are you when... doing pub quizzes at NASA? <laughs> <laughs> go, Dave, true or false? What do you think? Uh, we're going to say true. true. Well, I can tell you that the answer is, in fact, false. Oh. Only 3% of fights in bars are caused by pub quizzes. OK. Sean, Scott and Kirsty, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. Hi, I'm Jody Stowlove. I created Chair Dancing, the exercise programme that can be enjoyed by almost anybody. For example, a family can exercise together. <laughs> chair Dancing is also a good programme for people who exercise at work. Well, that got us going. Now stretch your arms side and up, straighten your body, and bring your arms down. Is that March music I hear? Let's march to the music. And how about playing the trombone? <laughs> Grab your orchestra batons because we're going to conduct the orchestra. You know the words. Sing along. Hey. I'd like to go into the Dragon's Den with that idea. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about her chair exercise routine is it would be much more effective if you stood up. <laughs> you can go... <laughs> You'd not be sitting down to do that. Seems like an ironic thing, because that is the sound I would make if I saw a fat woman waddling along. <laughs> <laughs> now, Kirsty, you had an exercise video out, didn't you? Oh, God. Yes, I did. What were you wearing in the exercise video? Were you wearing a unitard? Well, no, I wasn't. I was wearing I shorts. I like unitard. A... Short... Oh, sorry. No, Because well, I think unitards sound like people that are a bit special but have a horn. <laughs> <laughs> so I like them. Yeah. Right, here is your related statistic. On average, Brits spend 41 years of their lives sitting down. Is that true or false? <laughs> it's not all in one sitting. That would be... <laughs> well, I imagine it's more. But you do everything. You go to school, you sing down. You watch telly, you're sitting down. You drive a tank, it's not everybody, but you're sitting down. <laughs> These artists, they probably do hardly any sitting down. They're always swinging through the air mm -hmm. or fighting off a clown. Get off your dirty little <laughs> pervert. Get off, stop nibbling at my fishnets. <laughs> <laughs> Very tiny clown. No, it's on a trapeze. Of course she's doing that, it's on a trapeze. That's when she's swinging past. Woo! <laughs> and these are all facts. <laughs> I mean, how much time do you spend, like, peeling the sticky tape off your shoe? A long time. Yeah. Eight years, maybe. <laughs> you add it all up. How much time do you spend with your hands on your hips? A lot of... A lot of time. <laughs> when you're a kid, you spend your whole time sitting down, don't you? A on kid sh runs around all day long, I thought. Yeah, but just to the swings. And watch all right. <laughs> on average, Brits spend 41 years of their lives sitting down. Is that true or false? <laughs> Absolute Tommy rot! <laughs> I've never heard such a load of old bull that in all my days. Uh, I think it's true. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you that the answer is true. Yay. Yes, well done. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you it's four points for Sean's team and four points for Dave's team. Oh. It's all to play for. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls. It's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. The biggest worry for farmers. 
Is it uh, suicide badgers? <laughs> so suicide badgers? Yeah, suicide badgers. That sounds like a bad band. <laughs> <laughs> Is it falling asleep every time you've got to check how many sheep you've got? It's quite stressful because they really know what happens when you leave a gate open. <laughs> it's carnage within seconds. It's like ground zero. Is it, um, is it like being asleep at night and a, the scarecrow tapping on your window? <laughs> <laughs> Me and you outside. <laughs> I'm just going to put my killing head on. <laughs> <laughs> is it money? I'm going to give you that, Scott. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Yes, the biggest worry for farmers is low commodity prices, or money in other words. The other big problem is that society can't accept that the love between a man and a horse is just as valid as the love between a man and a sheep. <laughs> OK, celebrity most in need of a makeover. Cherie Blair. Oh, yeah. Oh, bless She's her. turning into a weeble as well, have you noticed? From the back, she looks oh. like a weeble. <laughs> She's got a beanbag down the back of her pants, <laughs> Probably the most honourable thing I would do is I bought some pictures of Cherie Blair topless off the market and didn't publish them. There are just some things oh, you can't. Well, you just kept them for yourself, you <laughs> dirty <laughs> self. How about Heather Mills? She's adopted Posh's pout, I think. Mm, that, that scowl. That, can, can you do the pout? little scowl. <laughs> Celebrity most in need of a makeover. Well, they did one on Anne Widdicombe, didn't they? That was, that was fantastic, obviously. But it's pointless, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> it's like sprinkling glitter on dog shit, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> She's a bizarre looking woman, isn't she? Yeah. She looks like a choir boy with a bend. <laughs> <laughs> Hairdo, and then something's going off. Oh, oh. <laughs> Pete Doherty. That's the right answer. Yeah. Oh. Yes, the celebrity most in need of a makeover is Pete Doherty. People say Pete Doherty hasn't contributed anything to society. On the contrary, he's made me introduce a condom into my fantasy of shagging oh. Kate Moss. <laughs> Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Scott and Kirsty have five points, Dave, Pierce and Jason have five points. It's a dead heat. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Story star, Reese Thomas, the X-Man, Louis Walsh, and their captain, John Locke. And facing them tonight, a treat from the street, Sally Lindsay, American Beauty, Reginald D. Hunter, and their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Carr. And welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, the average British male has sex 2,580 times during their life? Statistically, that means I'm going to live until I'm 197. 69% <laughs> of Americans believe they will go somewhere after death. Well, certainly, we're going to lift them off the toilet. <laughs> And an octopus has three hearts, so when octopus couples are having difficulties, they get together for a heart-to-heart-to-heart-to-heart-to-heart. -to -heart -to -heart -to -heart -to -heart. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation, and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panel's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave, Sally, Reg, what have the nation been talking about this week? Saddam Hussein got found guilty this week. They said, you must stand up for the verdict, and he wouldn't stand up. And so they got these two court officers to help him up, and he was picking one up, and he turned to him, and he said, get off me, don't make me bend, you ugly man. <laughs> and I thought, no, he's showing his true colours now. <laughs> <laughs> I liked him up to that, but that's just, <laughs> that's just bloody rude. That. He said he didn't want to be hung, he wanted to be shot, like a soldier, didn't he? I think it's time we compromised. 
Do both. <laughs> Do both. <laughs> Stream up by his feet, get him swinging like that. Three shots a pound, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why he looks so disappointed, because he wanted to be shot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh that'll yeah. be hard. <laughs> it's a bit like at Christmas if uh, if you want a bike and you get a jigsaw. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. You know they're going to kill him for bad things he did to lots of people. I had an idea that they should kill him the way you know when they pulled down his statue and they dragged it slightly with cars and uh, and tanks and you know what? You've seen the news. <laughs> I think they should do the same with him and kill him in that way. You get lots of children, you know, to recreate that dragging down of the statue. Put it, and then put a bit of rope round him with tiny little cars, little pig. What are you looking like that for? <laughs> <laughs> this is like watching the news, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And then you just drag him out of the room and he'll kind of fall in half at one point and then they can, everyone can just jump on his head. <laughs> the thing I thought about him was that... Hold on a sec, you can't just move straight off. Yeah. <laughs> you're saying, what you're saying is they should push him over. They should slowly... <laughs> they sentence you to death by pushing over. Yeah. <laughs> In America, they don't have executions. This is totally Christian-driven, too, because in America, they don't have executions on Sundays or Mondays, because on Sundays, God don't want to see no new people on his day off. <laughs> and then you don't want to have your people execute nobody on Monday, because you just back to work. And shake <laughs> you should be ready to murder somebody by Wednesday, really. I must have done some good for someone. Is it Mr. Hussein? He must have done some good for someone. Yeah, there must be some good things in Iraq. He was very good to his mum. Yeah. <laughs> Did he kill her? Huh? Did he kill her? Yeah. I, Did yeah, he kill why any not? Family? He's not going to sue us. <laughs> yeah. Saddam Hussein killed his mum. <laughs> Come get me. <laughs> good. Well, shall we have a look and see if Saddam is one of the most talked about things this week? <laughs> of course he is. The most talked about thing this week. Saddam has been sentenced to death by hanging. He thought he found a loophole. No, Saddam, that's a noose. <laughs> Sean, Louis and Reese, what have the nation been talking about this week? Four-year-old girl's depressed. She's a bit down. And uh, she took to the doctor and they said, he said, yes, yeah, she's depressed. Instead of what he should have done, actually, when he went to her, he should have listened to all her symptoms. He should have gone, hold on a sec. Boom. <laughs> and he has been fine. <laughs> Apparently, the reason this girl is depressed is because she didn't get into the right primary school. Mm. Mm. That was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the reason she didn't get in is because her parents didn't put the application in time. So the reason she's depressed is, she, is that her parents are a couple of pricks. <laughs> That's what it contains. She tried to slit her wrist with stickle bricks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice image, yeah. She put her head in the oven, but it's one of those little plastic ones, it's fine. <laughs> I, when I was four, I used to get Randy, I used to rub myself against the chair leg. <laughs> Honestly, and my mum would go, stop that, it's naughty. And my dad said, don't tell him to, don't stop, he's Welsh. He said, don't tell him to stop, because he might go funny in the head. And I think I did it till I was about 14. <laughs> I would get on the chair leg and rub like that. Get <laughs> <laughs> on the chair leg and... Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> How they spotted it? I mean, I don't know how they actually identified her depression. I She's not listening to, you know, Leonard Cohen in a room. <laughs> <laughs> Just sort of sit up there smoking. I mean, there's... I she, she, she's up in her room listening to the Tweenies' very difficult second album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether this four-year-old depressed girl is one of the most talked about things of the week. Oh, it is. Oh, That's not good. This is the story of the four-year-old girl who's depressed about not getting into the right primary school. It's not uncommon for small children to get depressed. I know a baby who cries all day and can't get out of bed. <laughs> Doctors knew something was seriously wrong when she stopped laughing at the Chuckle Brothers. To me, to you, to me, to you. What's the point? Keep it. <laughs> Dave Steen, uh, what else have the nation been talking about this Rich. week? Uh, I guess the American midterm elections. Um, People's excited too that uh, Rumsfeld resigned and just so what? <laughs> Bush is not real. But the people who, who who back Bush, those are the dangerous people. You don't never see them. You know, getting upset with Bush is like some kid coming up to me with a puppet and going, you know, out of my way, darky, and I going, you damn puppet, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Ned Lander made me smile. Said Democrats spell disaster for Bush. <laughs> Can't spell for shit, can he? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, the reason, the reason they lost was because of the war in Iraq. It's cost them a billion a week. Yeah, a billion pounds a week. Yeah, who's bloody paying for it, eh? It's us. <laughs> 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 Isn't it? 
Have you thought about writing for the Daily Mail? <laughs> seem to understand much, but you seem sort of upset about it, and that's, <laughs> those are, I think, the key things. Yeah, my mum buys the Daily Mail, right, only because the ink doesn't come off on your hands. <laughs> you know what's keeping it there? What? Hate. Yeah. <laughs> so I can see with the BMP pamphlet going, no, I don't agree with it, but, you know, it's lovely paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Louis, what, what do you make of the midterm elections, I imagine? Jimmy, I just, I've never been a fan of Bush. Hey, I've never been a fan of Bush. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you for your honesty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Schwarzenegger got back in again as well, yeah. didn't oh, he? Which is always yeah. astonishing. Did you hear what he said when he got back in? I love sequels. <laughs> well, if he loves sequels, why doesn't he go and make Kindergarten Cop 2? <laughs> <laughs> I always felt that that never resolved and properly, that film, at the end. What a great film. <laughs> I used to like, you know, Schwarzenegger movies back in the 80s. And that, something bothered me about those movies were like, he would be in, playing these American roles and no one would notice he sounded different. And as racist as America is, he would have been like, pff, pff, Billy, let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah. You think his partner would go, Where the fuck are you from? <laughs> <laughs> right, well, let's have a look and see if the midterm elections are one of the most talked about things this week. Oh, back in the league. Back in the league. President Bush was remarkably upbeat about the Democrat victory until he found out he wasn't a Democrat. <laughs> Donald Rumsfeld has been forced to resign. He's been replaced by someone more popular, compassionate and caring. It's a scarecrow of Darth Vader that belches poisonous <laughs> gas. <laughs> Sean, Louis, Rhys, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it Genesis coming back? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, the nation's thrilled. <laughs> I, I know that you've been talking... You're a massive Genesis fan, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone who laughs? Frankly, hasn't listened to enough right. of their music. <laughs> Anyone no, no, still no. has the ability to laugh? <laughs> <laughs> hasn't listened to enough of their music. They're not really coming back, Jimmy, though, because Peter Gabriel is not in the band. He was the talented one. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> it's not one of the most talked about things of the week. Maybe it will be now. Now everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should start talking about it from this Stop point talking. onwards. Yeah, OK. Well, there's people with a sandwich in their mouth go, what? <laughs> 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 Get that? <laughs> it's true, Genesis are reforming. Famously, Phil Collins once performed on top of the pops with a tin of paint because his wife had run off with a decorator. The decorator didn't mind because he was fucking Phil Collins' wife and had plenty of paint. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Hmm? Britney's divorce. She divorced her husband. By text. By text. <laughs> That's come as a shock, though, this Britney thing, isn't it? That it's not lasted. When you saw the wedding, all beautiful and all that, matching tracksuits. <laughs> Trailer party, he's got pimp on the back of his. Mm. You know, Beautiful. what went wrong? <laughs> Do you think it's a good thing, bad thing? If they don't want to be married, then yeah. That's the point he of was, divorce. He was... <laughs> Can't fault you on that. <laughs> they were both unhappy. It said it's the first good point you've made. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you think she was mad to marry him in the first place? I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether Britney Spears is one of the most talked about things this week. Yes, of course it was. Yes, Britney Spears has split up with Kevin Federline. I feel sorry for Kevin Federline. He genuinely thought that they'd be together for the rest of his album's promotional period. <laughs> OK, one more to get. Fingers on buzzers. What else have people been talking about this week? Is it this uh, Tory councillor <gasps> with the racist poem that she's forwarded, emailed onto her work? She's not really she's an evil, stupid cow. She's illiterate as well. She sent this poem round to hundreds of people, and it's just outrageous. I think it's white folks overreacting, because there's two types of racism. Real racism, where people get hurt and can't get housing, or there's that fake racism that white people get upset about, where somebody's feelings might get hurt. People are so <laughs> sensitive now, and so upset, especially middle-class white people, they're afraid of being accused of being racist. Sometimes for fun, I'll call a white guy racist who I know isn't racist and just watch him lose his mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not racist. No, no, I'm buying you a drink. I'm going to show you I'm not racist. And, and <laughs> want to fuck my sister? See, I'm not, I'm not racist. But the fact you never called oh. my sister as well. <laughs> and she used that old cliche that said, oh, I, I didn't mean it offensively because I have friends that are Asian. Yeah. Not anymore, you fucking don't, though. <laughs> Cameron can try and pretend that he's got all these forward-thinking modern visionary metrosexual people in his party. But basically, if they had their way, they'd build a time machine and it'd all go back to 1901. <laughs> <laughs> it 
conservative means keep things the same, not let's try samosa. It might be nice. <laughs> a lot of people are prejudiced and racist, and they don't mean no harm by it. Just every time I go to Ireland, some white guy at a party says to me, you know Irish people are considered the Negroes of Europe. You know, as if I'm supposed to go, no wonder I'm so comfortable here. <laughs> I remember I told my dad that. I was like, Dad, you know Irish people are considered the Negroes of Europe. And he said, God damn it, white folks don't let black folks have nothing. <laughs> I love how he's racist. You know, Wordsworth, I wanted lonely as a cloud. I bet he meant a white one. <laughs> he couldn't say I wanted as a black cloud, because uh, as a, oh yeah. Yeah, he could. <laughs> Reese, grown ups talking. Yeah. <laughs> It's all too clever for me. I don't watch the news. I thought this was a program actually about cats. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if the Conservative Party's race controversy is one of the most talked about things this week. Yes, the Tories have been dogged by controversy over racism this week. Eleanor Bland, the councillor who sent an offensive email, denied she was racist, saying, I have Asian friends, which gave the Tories another reason to sack her. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the end of that round, I can tell you it's two points for Sean's team and three points to Dave's team. <laughs> the next round is called The Poll with a Hole. Here's your first one. 26% of Brits say a TV show has motivated them to what? Is it, um, shit in a Tupperware box and have a good route through it? <laughs> <laughs> I hate that programme. Gillian McKeith, isn't it, that yeah. does the, uh, How Clean Is Your Poo? You know that table that she shows everyone, that table of food? She's, Doctor Who? Yeah. Oh, look at this. Look at this table of food. It's exactly the same table that Kerry McFadden shows in the Iceland dance. Mm. <laughs> 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 a lot of stuff's on telly these days. I would make me want to invade Poland, because it always seems to be Nazi shows on television, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> History Channel, just... Nazis marching. <laughs> You've got two sound effects, Nazis marching or... 26% <laughs> of Brits say TV has motivated them to solve crimes in the Yorkshire Dales. <laughs> Has it motivated them to buy a product that isn't available in the shops? <laughs> and when they get it through the post, they know why. It's fucking shit. <laughs> I once, to my shame, I bought a machine that would rock, rock, rock my way to a flatter stomach. <laughs> Jimmy, I think it's to be successful. Well, your show motivates people to queue up in a car park for four hours. And be famous, yeah, for a short and be while. be famous, yeah. yeah. For a short while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you said it. <laughs> what is the X Factor? You're looking for the X Factor, it's like a... it's a special potion. <laughs> it's a syndrome that means you what can't get really embarrassed. Has. Yeah. <laughs> Is it redecorate your house? That is the correct answer. <laughs> Next question. 58% of swimmers think what helps them go faster? Engines. <laughs> <laughs> I think sharks. <laughs> yeah. Depends where you're swimming, doesn't it? I mean, you don't get sharks in the... Only basking sharks around the coast of the British Isles. And, I, and they're Woo! harmless. Get you and your shark knowledge. Yeah, ask me anything about sharks and I know it. What's the life expectancy of a great white? Oh, it depends where it lives. <laughs> In Hackney, it's only got about six months. <laughs> Postcode lottery. Once they're out of the water, they're knackered. <laughs> Waxing. Waxing, shaving your hair off. Correct answer. Oh, brilliant. 58% of swimmers think shaving helps them go faster. Gillette claimed to be the best a man can get, but surely that's a blowjob from twins. <laughs> to Bross. <laughs> and how are the McDonald brothers? <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round, Sean, Louis and Reese have four points. Dave, Sally and Rich have four points. <laughs> Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I'll give the panellists a simple statement and all they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Dave, Sally and Reg, you're to go first. Let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. Hi, how are you? I'm Denise from San Diego, California, and I'm going to show you how to shoot the AK-47 automatic rifle, the standard issue to the Soviet bloc armies, I might add. There's something about having a gun in your hands and being able to control it. I don't know what it is, but all the girls talked about it. Did you notice they were all wearing what they'd shot? <laughs> 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 
Al Qaeda training videos. <laughs> Here's your related statistic 14% of American husbands have bought their wives a gun as a Christmas present. True or false? Go ahead and go with that's probably being true, man. You want a woman who can just reach down under the pillow and just go doof, doof, doof. Doof, 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 doof. Doof, doof. We are barking at each other now. <laughs> I think if they did buy someone a gun, it wouldn't be the main present. <laughs> <laughs> they go, oh, and I've got you a gun. Yeah, because you'd be gutted Christmas morning and it's a gun. You'd be like, ah, is that it? Well, you'd also you'd never buy the right gun, would you? would never be happy. <laughs> like, how many hints do I have to drop? I didn't want the AK-47, I wanted the M16. Yeah, you grew up in the States. Did you have a gun at any stage? I'd never owned a gun, but parents had guns and all. And, you know, just... They would argue a lot, but they never, like, reach for their guns or nothing. <laughs> because, you know, they civilize and shit. 14% of American husbands have bought their wives a gun as a Christmas present. True or false? Um, do you think it's higher? I do think it's higher, but okay. the option is offered is true or false, not possibly more. Well, if so. it's not... <laughs> well, if you think it's more, then it's false. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. You're a real trickster, you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 True. False. <laughs> I can tell you the answer is false. <laughs> Only 5% of American husbands have bought their wives a gun at Christmas. OK. Sean, Louis and Reese, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. Once every two weeks at Wrexham in North Wales, Barry Manilow fans get together for a Barry night. Boyfriends and husbands are excluded, so the Manny lovers can devote all their time and attention to an uninterrupted weekend of Manny lust. I think I'm more of a fan in the way that I have used Barry's influence to help me in my professional life. Much of the philosophy in his songs, his lyrics, uh, I have, well, quite come to live by. These started off the company that I run today and am very successful in. And the eyeliner is very interesting because I think I may be one of the first people who have ever painted onto felt. <laughs> but I want to know, how do they get in your bedroom? <laughs> Here's your related statistic. 43% of Brits say the 80s was the best decade ever. Is that true or false? Which 80s? The 1680s or the 1580s? I think they're talking about the 1980s. I think yeah. the voice of wisdom has spoken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the music was better in the 80s, Jimmy. The music was better. Well, who's fault's that? <laughs> <laughs> it was the Falklands, Tiananmen Square, on the downside, but then again, Soda Stream. <laughs> they didn't have that a terrible show, I Love the 80s. That didn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> the weather was better then. <laughs> We had proper winters. It hasn't snowed since then on Christmas Day. As in Manchester. That's it. Yeah. Doesn't count. <laughs> Pot noodles weren't as advanced. It was only chow mein and chicken and mushroom then, wasn't it? Yeah. Now we've got everything. Oh, yes, cuisine has moved on. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so 43% of Brits say the 80s was the best decade ever. True or false? Wasn't that British TV show Minder on in the 80s? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, it was, yeah. Yeah, the 80s was the best. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, they should bring Minder back. It'd be quite good to bring it back. But actually, with George Cole and Dennis Waterman. So Dennis Waterman is basically wiping his ass and giving him bed baths. <laughs> he's literally his Minder. <laughs> <laughs> he's winching him out of the bath, <laughs> drying him down, <laughs> feeding him, letting him go like that in the bowl. There you go. OK, so what are you going for? True or false? I think true. Yeah. 43% of Brits say the 80s was the best decade ever. I can tell you the answer is so true. Funny how it seems, always in time, but never in line for dreams. Head over heels, wind to two toe. This is the sound of my soul. This is the sound. Can I go to boot camp, please? No, you're brutal. <laughs> So at the end of that round, I can tell you it's five points to Sean's team and five points for Dave's team. Oh! Oh, yes, all to play for. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls and it's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Biggest restaurant faux pas. I'll tell you what they don't <laughs> like in places like the Ivy. When they come and you've got that big silver dome on your food, when they take it off, if you go, da-da! <laughs> <laughs> but the Ivy is not that posh. Where's posh, then? We have much posher restaurants in Dublin. Name one. Abracababra. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is it coming uh, back from the loo with your skirt and your knickers? Oh, I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> Is it doing a runner from a restaurant late at night? Yeah. <laughs> Get into the taxi rank going... <laughs> <laughs> Where's your jacket? Oh. <laughs> One of those big foam hands, just so you get more service. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I have no idea. Do you know when they say here, try a bit of the wine, and you just stay there and they have to wait till you've tried it, just stay there for hours. <laughs> Don't drink it. See when he says drink it. You're brilliant. <laughs> You're making me think I might have children. What? Yeah. Really? It's just an adorable little creature that gets things wrong, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's lovely. Like murder. <laughs> Is he clicking your fingers? Correct answer. Well done, Louis Walsh. Yes, the biggest restaurant faux pas is clicking your fingers for the waiter. Number two on the list was quibbling over the bill. Oh, no, he's quibbled all over the bill. <laughs> OK, next question. Best way to become famous? Is it, is it sleeping with Simon Cowell? Is that how you did it? No, that's not... <laughs> Do you think he has his pyjamas up to about there? <laughs> <laughs> Run faster than anybody else in the world. I'm going to give you that. It's actually to be a professional sportsman. <laughs> yes, the best way to become famous is to become a professional sportsman. Just ask the UK's number three cyclist, Derek Chalmers. <laughs> I like that. Because <laughs> he's not famous. Most... Oh. Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Dave, Sally and Reg have six points, Sean, Louis and Reese have six points. It's a dead heat. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, there are around 44 million bubbles in a bottle of champagne? And that statistic is brought to you by a scientist who was stood up on a date. <laughs> in 2005, it was made illegal to keep goldfish in goldfish bowls in Italy. So, that's goldfish sorted. Now, organised crime. <laughs> And the average woman will tell 28,000 lies in her lifetime. I don't know what my girlfriend would make of that. She's out with an old school friend tonight. <laughs> Apparently, she might have to stay over. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean, Ulrika, Michael, what have people been talking about this week? A story I like, I, I like the story about the, uh, the Luton manager who has complained about a female referee. Not a referee, a lineswoman. He said if we're letting women into football, well, then it's just all gone to pot. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, fantastic great. He said, it may sound sexist, but I am sexist. Which <laughs> <laughs> is fantastic. And this is like saying, yeah, I did burglar your house, but I am a burglar. <laughs> And he did, he did apologise. He did, well, he sort of apologised for causing offence, but said his words were ill-timed. They're very understanding with me. They're probably too understanding. Like, if, if they, they won't give a penalty if, you know, the other team are 4-0 down, they're under a lot of pressure. I can understand why he did it. <laughs> they don't even tell you what it's for. They just book you 
And then you go, well, what's that for? And they go, well, if you don't know. <laughs> Some of them be good referees. Dinner ladies. <laughs> you wouldn't argue with a dinner lady, would you? You wouldn't argue with a woman in a tabard and a tash. Would you? <laughs> you thought the ref wasn't facing you. You thought you were going to kick someone and they'd apply makeup. Bang to rights in the middle, are you? Bang to <laughs> I saw that! <laughs> I saw it! You've dated a couple of footballers. Were they sexist? Or were they all right? Oh, they were lovely. <laughs> a couple? A cu have you? I don't know. I'm you just... said that couple like there was loads. A couple? Hundreds? <laughs> Go on, did you find any of those guys you dated to be sexist? Of course. <laughs> you don't have video refs, do you? Like, they're doing rugby uh, league. No, we, I don't. Have it in football. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a video ref and they go, let's go to the big screen, and a female ref went, oh, put X Factor in. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see if he's gone out. <laughs> the lady in question, uh, Amy Rayner, has been qualified for 14 years. So she's actually more qualified than he is? Yeah, he's been a manager, I think, for four years. Oh, good. <laughs> Would you fancy refereeing? Uh, no. You said that like you could actually arrange it. <laughs> do you fancy yeah, refereeing? You... <laughs> yes, I do, actually. Well, don't worry, I'll sit <laughs> We're doing Man United Liverpool on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Never know your luck. <laughs> Shouting at the ref is an integral part of modern football, and I think it would make life very difficult for footballers just screaming at a woman going, Why? <laughs> he pushed me! <laughs> I didn't, he did! It'd just be like shouting at your mum. It wouldn't be as effective. They'd stop doing it. It's probably a very good thing. They should have female refs. I'd have female scientists. I would. I'd have them driving trains. <laughs> I'd let them drive cars. I would. <laughs> <laughs> I'd let them work as policemen, police women, anything, you know. I just think it's time to open up the whole thing to them, let them do what they want. <laughs> yeah, let them ride bikes. Sorry. It. <laughs> it can't be that dangerous, they'll get the hang of it. No, let them do what What? Is it a top five talking point? <laughs> yes, it is. There are 10,000 affiliated women's football teams and 133,000 registered female players. Goodness me, that's an awful lot of lesbians. <laughs> Dave, Johnny and Christian, and what else have the nation been talking about this week? I'm a celebrity. Get me host of you, I started. <laughs> and, um, gripping stuff. Do you know who they all are, though? I mean, I, 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 I watched really don't care. I'm still yeah. quite puzzled about who they are. Yeah. Having watched it. It should be called I'm a Celebrity. No, honestly, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am, yeah, I've got an agent, haven't you? Well, Jan Leeming's on. Do you, do you know that? No, the thing I like about Jan Leeming is that she's obviously full of shit a lot of the time. She lied, you know, she lied about her task and made it out to be a lot worse than it really was. But everybody believes her because she's a newsreader. Yeah, and exactly. that is the great newsreader's luxury. You can talk total shit and everyone goes, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if that's true. <laughs> I was actually asked to go on. Were you? I get asked every year and I'm that far away from Panto. It's good. <laughs> 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 on, would you ever think about it? I've thought about it, but in really vicious dreams. <laughs> Just turn up the first night, eat every bit of rice in the camp, stand there looking menacing, and then set your own camp up ten yards away going, ONE OF YOU WILL DIE TONIGHT! <laughs> He's a very strange looking man. I saw a bit of it, that David Guest. He looks like a sort of Muppet with alopecia. Just, <laughs> all the fur's just fallen off slowly. And it's just this weird blob thing. It does look as it. if Paul Simon has melted. Yeah. <laughs> he cries through his ears, I think. Yeah, yeah. You know, one day, all, all the paper mache things you made at school and discarded will rise up with him and start an army. <laughs> Do you want to look at him? He looks like his plastic surgery's been done specifically so he can appear in Aladdin. Isn't he? <laughs> He's gone to plastic surgeon and said, I want to work in panto. <laughs> I like him. Yes. I think you he's, like him? He's great. I think he's great entertainment. Don't you agree with that? Well, that's like, I mean, there's lots of great documentaries about Hitler. Well, I, this man's nothing like Hitler. He's done nothing wrong. He's, I, I vote for him. I want him on the Bush Tucker trial. <laughs> I've got him. I'm literally I'm obsessed with seeing him repeatedly on television. I like David Guest. Is he very gay? Is who very gay? Is he very gay? Well, Michael. No, no don't do that. <laughs> well, in fairness, in fairness, you are wearing a pink shirt and saying, I love David Guest. I'm mentioning my sexuality to Jimmy. Like Jimmy knows of my sexuality. Jimmy knows. <laughs> He's definitely gay. <laughs> no, to, get, to, to get on this show, you have to have a medical with Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> My wife is obviously squirming uh, watching this. Thinking, oh my God, I've married a gay. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if it's there. <laughs> yes, 
the latest series of I'm a Celebrity started this week. Fashion designer Scott Henshaw said he tried to turn the other men in the camp gay. What, Jason Donovan, David Guest and Tommy Anstis? Good luck with that. <laughs> I saw you went straight. You cut to me after the gay joke. <laughs> You said gay. I thought, why am I on the screen? <laughs> gay. And it's I go, because <laughs> the reason we cut to you was because some people yes. watching in Newcastle won't know what a gay man looks like. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a visual cue for them. <laughs> also, you haven't seen a bit of text that's going to come up in the edit. I was just, yeah. just gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be loads of, sort of flowers and butterflies around here. <laughs> Sean, Ulrika, and Michael, what else have people been talking about this week? Bond. Uh, James Bond. He's 007. <laughs> and I like, uh... David Guest. David... <laughs> I just like the, the use of the double O, seven, because I have a lot of trouble with O and zero. You've missed the point, huh? It's not zero. That's why it's O. That's why it's not just seven. It's O, O, seven. So when you see me go, uh-oh, seven. Uh -oh. <laughs> Are you a Daniel Craig convert? Yes, definitely. Yeah. It's pathetic, isn't it's it? The, the way they all slagged him off beforehand and I then know, turned around. Great. He's a real hunk. He emerges from the water. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't keep up this facade any longer. <laughs> he was in the National Youth Theatre around the same time as me, I think, and he... he, he... What? <laughs> Sorry, I thought we booked Christian Guru Murphy. <laughs> I, know, I was in the National Youth Theatre very briefly, but not as long as he was. As a newsreader. He used to get a lot of big parts. <laughs> Most of the Bonds couldn't act, could they? I mean, but he actually can. He's stolen a lot of your moves. <laughs> There's a thing where he punches someone in the neck and it's pure Christian Guru Murphy. If things have been different, <laughs> it's classic. I've seen the film, I was there on the night. Oh, was it? How did you enjoy the premiere? Lovely, yeah. They're not that impressed, are they? You've got four people in. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go to the premiere as well. But who couldn't go? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did go and I found myself turning to my brother, who I brought along, and going, oh, for fuck, what are we waiting for? And he went, the Queen? <laughs> <laughs> did she come round with the ice creams? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she enjoyed it. Does she sit with everyone front, middle or back? I mean, where does she choose to front, sit? Front, middle or back? <laughs> no, she's, yeah. <laughs> what the Queen does, what the Queen does, she sits on a massive throne in front of the screen so nobody can see it. <laughs> She's got a big crowd and she's moving it around. <laughs> sure, she was pain in the arse. <laughs> Nobody saw a thing. <laughs> OK, let's see if it's one of the top five stories. Yes, it is. The most talked about thing this week. Yes, the latest Bond movie was released this week. Casino Royale is the first Bond movie that doesn't rely on gadgets. Q must be spinning in his grave, powered by the Grave Spinatron 3000. <laughs> Team, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Apparently, the taxpayers had to compensate a load of ex-heroin addicts in prison right. um, because they were forced to come off heroin when they were sent to jail. Too soon. Too soon, and it was too painful. I think it's bizarre that, you know, you can have drugs in prison because it's not really prison if you're off your face, is it? <laughs> the judge said to me, you've got six months, but you won't feel a thing. I go, oh, fine, that's great. <laughs> it costs £150 a day, though, for methadone to get yeah. someone off heroin. Yeah. Which I can't help feeling, give them heroin, then. <laughs> Where are they getting it from? Harrods? <laughs> right. Have we not learned from society within lessons to build prisons like Charlie Wonka's Chocolate Factory? <laughs> like Charlie Wonka's well, Chocolate Factory? Well, if they had a ribbon of chocolate, they wouldn't take cocaine, would they? <laughs> been, I like the been way you follow that. around and eating. <laughs> What's the finance costs? I just want to see the figures. Jesus, why am I not on a government panel? <laughs> Is this a cry for help? I've thought it through! <laughs> Let's see if prisoner compensation is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, prisoners have got compensation because they were denied treatment for drug addiction. And also in the news this week, a prison chaplain admitted to smoking crack cocaine. He apparently had so much of the drug, he believed that a man put to death over 2,000 years ago was his best friend. <laughs> Right, one more to get. Fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about this week? Desert Orchid died. People got upset about that, didn't they? The nation's favourite horse. How nice can a horse be, really? Right. It's like, how evil can a horse be? <laughs> it's a pretty sort of thin area, that scope of behaviour that they live in, isn't it? It's trotting round a field or stopping. <laughs> and it's sad, 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 sad. Cos everyone was very upset that he'd, you know, he died. But in fairness, at any point in his career, if he'd so much as sprained an ankle, they would have shot him in the head. 
were some amazing quotes though, wasn't it? So uh, he was loved because he was so versatile. It's a bloody horse. He couldn't make a brew or do a bit of pottery, surely to God. <laughs> Occasionally when he crossed the finishing line, he used to lift his hoof up and go. Yeah. <laughs> he was a bit of a character. That you know, any opportunity to put a funny hat on, he took it. <laughs> he often was seen standing behind John McCrick with his hoof going like that. <laughs> I don't understand why dwarves don't ride horses. <laughs> You'd think they would, wouldn't you? You know, they're always looking for short blokes to ride. Well, there's just there's loads of dwarves out there. Why don't they ride horses? Short legs. <laughs> but those, are, those are your arms. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they just lift the stirrups up. Not that high. <laughs> glue them. Just, just glue them. <laughs> Glue short them. legs and short arms. They have to hold on, don't they? They don't really do much. I, I can actually tell you the reason why they don't use dwarves. It's because the flat season is in the middle of panto. <laughs> <laughs> or, maybe, or maybe they've got a deal with the jockeys, like you do horses, we'll do panto. Yeah. We won't, you know, like an agreement in a was... meeting in a car park. That's a gang fight I would yeah. love to see. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if the death of Desert Orchid is up there. Yes, it is. Desert Orchid sadly passed away this week. In a moving tribute, fellow racehorse Biffins Bridge said... <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, it's three points to Sean's team and two points to Dave's team. <laughs> the next round is called the pole with a hole. Here's your first question. 12% of lottery winners have what? I know what I'd do if I won the lottery. Right, first thing I'd do is liquidise an elephant. <laughs> Okay. Just get a big liquidizer, put it in. Vroom. You could hear the tusks. And then, and then I'd open uh, hairdressers. You know, just have it keep ticking over. But also the added thing is, if people come in, you completely mess their hair up, and you go, don't have to pay. I'm not really a hairdresser. Just... <laughs> it's like the lottery, actually. <laughs> All right, Kim, calm down. No, <laughs> I heard that you've got as much chance of winning the lottery this week because so many people bought tickets, as guessing somebody's phone number. How awful would that be if you actually guessed somebody's number and then you've won nothing? <laughs> Related to travel. I've gone abroad. Exactly the opposite of that. I've disappeared completely. <laughs> <laughs> Just completely vaporised as soon as they've won. They were so ecstatic, all their cells inverted and they became <laughs> antimatter. Is it it's not close. going away? <laughs> yeah, I'll give you that. The answer is, in fact, they still haven't been abroad. 12% of lottery winners have never been abroad. Of course, a lot of people only win a tenner. Where's that going to get you? Prague? Yeah. 34% <laughs> of people in Blackpool would like what? Would like a supermarket. <laughs> because there's only so many recipes that take in rock and sugar dummies. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of them are developing Badakus veins that actually says Blackpool down the side. <laughs> <laughs> 34% of people in the back would like a tram up the front. <laughs> my granny, when I used to go when I was a kid, my granny, when they first went there, she said, if I stand on that rail there, will I get electrocuted? They said, only if you cut your leg over that wire up there. 34% <laughs> <laughs> of people in Blackpool would like Tony Blur to admit that that clown in the glass case is actually his brother. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bit like the man in the iron mask, and he should be set free and allowed to run for office. <laughs> 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 Welcome to question time, Mr. Blur's lost brother. <laughs> What's your approach to taxis? <laughs> <laughs> it, would it, they think they'd like a piazza. Don't know, just give it a bit of class. <laughs> Casino? That's exactly the right answer. Oh, God, God, thank God for me. Yes, 34% of people in Blackpool would like a super casino. I'll tell you what, if you want to gamble in Blackpool, why don't you just get a hot dog from one of the vans? <laughs> At the end of that round, I can tell you Sean, Ulrika and Michael have six points, and Dave, Johnny and Krishna have two points. <laughs> Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Sean, Ulrika and Michael, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. This shipment is supposed to be for 12 cards. Can you get the rest for me? Oh, okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Got 
to be the best beginning of casualty that's ever been made. <laughs> Here is your related statistic. 9% of workers say they would be prepared to break a bone to win a compensation claim. Do you think that's true or false? I've actually done something to deliberately hurt myself at work. I worked in the kitchens of a psychiatric hospital and it was such a depressing job that I thought, if I left it, I wouldn't have got dull. So I deliberately, I was mopping up and I threw myself at this sort of metal butcher's table and just sort of smacked my head on it. I actually <laughs> did knock myself out. <laughs> and I didn't get a penny because I had the regulation non-slip boots on. So they said, well, there's no way you could have slipped. You must have, <laughs> must be your fault. <laughs> and they sacked me because they said, you're an idiot, throw it yourself. I've thrown oh, no. myself off a horse once. You threw yourself off a horse? Yeah. <laughs> Onto a footballer. <laughs> <laughs> I would think that it's very, in most jobs, though, it's quite hard to break, break something. Mm. You can't break yeah. your leg photocopying, can you? <laughs> Unless you have like, repetitive, a repetitive incident, like you keep dropping a stapler on your foot like, <laughs> about 100 times a day. Like, just, doof, ow, doof, oh, keep knocking that. And then they just say, we'll just move the stapler. 9% of workers say they would be prepared to break a bone to win compensation. True or false? I'd say it's false. I can tell you the answer is false. Well done. <laughs> yes, only 2% of workers say they would be prepared to break a bone to get compensation. My gran broke both her hips at work. She made a fortune suing that porn company. <laughs> Dave, Johnny and Christian, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. Do you hear something? Yeah, wait, there's one over there. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Go ahead. Good shot. <laughs> You're going to put some meat in the freezer this year. Thank you. Beautiful. You've heard of tuna melts or patty melts. Why not squirrel melts? <laughs> well, this is Justin's squirrel. He's kind of cute. I'm going to put his little tender button here. And some celery. I like to use the leaves. You want to poach this for about an hour on a low simmer. And I've got some already done here. This makes a nice weekend snack, maybe while watching a football game, or you can take it to a tailgate party. I'm going to add a just a slice of cheese. Now you want to pop these into an oven that I preheated to 350 degrees for about eight to 10 minutes. Perfecto! Squirrel melts, you must try them. I just have to say no animals were hurt in the making of that film, unless you count squirrels. <laughs> Here's your related statistic. 25% of Brits say they would definitely try squirrel meat if Jamie Oliver demonstrated a recipe on TV. <laughs> True or false? Only if it was appropriately labelled may contain nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's the recipe that's the issue, really. It's not like you go, oh, well, I haven't tried it with coriander. I always thought squirrels are a bit like Tyrannosaurus Rex, aren't they? Because they, they've got those... See them, they're quite terrifying squirrels, they come towards you. There was a campaign in Britain about ten years ago to encourage people to eat squirrel meat. I did a piece about it on the news. It was total rubbish, but because meat. I did it on the news, everyone believed it. And, um... <laughs> do you ever do that? Is there ever a slow news day and you just go... Make it up. It doesn't matter. Squirrel meat. No, I'll do it. <laughs> Is that a story? Yeah, why not? 25% of Brits say they would definitely try squirrel meat if Jamie Oliver demonstrated a recipe on TV, true or false. I mean, that's basically, would you do anything Jamie Oliver told you to do? Uh, most people seem to, don't they? Well, he's an inspiration. He's brilliant at humiliating fat kids. <laughs> Some of them fat kids go on to be fat adults. How, how we get <laughs> you ever see people busking with squirrels, do you? Like they do with cobras in India. <laughs> you could do some good busking with a squirrel, couldn't you? If you, you know, if you had like an elaborate system of ladders and pulleys and swings, and you just got him climbing around and he'd, they'd put some music, and you could make a fortune, you wouldn't need to kill him. You could actually have them working for you. Probably become a millionaire. <laughs> like more travelling, hundreds of blokes. Franchise it. A bit like the cats. <laughs> the squirrels. 25% uh, of Brits say they would definitely try squirrel meat if Jamie Oliver demonstrated a recipe on TV. True or false, Dave? It's only genuine. You think it's true? Do I ever ask you to trust me? <laughs> true. 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 Well, I can tell you the answer is true. Yes, 25% of Brits say they would try squirrel meat if Jamie Oliver demonstrated a recipe on TV. I'll tell you what, I'd try Jamie Oliver meat if a squirrel told me to. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you it's seven points for Sean's team and three points for Dave's team. Oh. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your first one. Most common cause of stress for priests. Is it the devil? <laughs> <laughs> Someone's cut the uh, brake lining on their on their motorbike, and they're going down a hill, and they can't 
Ah, I can't breathe. <laughs> and they're heading towards like a brick wall. That's quite stressful. Is it concealment of homosexuality of which I know nothing? <laughs> Frustration. That's the correct answer. Oh, well, yes. Yes, the most common cause of stress for priests is celibacy. That and the fact they miss Hollyoaks every Sunday. <laughs> Celebrity who most often features in Brits and Nightmares. <laughs> Jimmy Savile. <laughs> I had a terrible dream once where I saw Doc Cotton in a cat suit. Is it, is it the bloke from the Worthington original lads? You mean Werner's original? <laughs> Werner's, yeah. Worthington's <laughs> 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 original. You're like my nan. <laughs> Worthington's <laughs> originals. <laughs> Give them to kids. They love them. <laughs> <laughs> my great kids were so pissed. <laughs> is it getting in a taxi and Richard Ammon's driving? <laughs> I imagine after this week it'll be David Guest, won't it? David Guest and Michael Jackson have been after you for body parts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dreading it, and I've got to ask, is it me? <laughs> no, it's not you. You're in people's dreams. <laughs> yeah? Uh, she used to be a page three girl. Uh, That'd be Jordan. That's a correct answer. <laughs> yes, the celebrity who most often yes. features in Brit's Nightmares is Jordan. She started her modelling career by sending pictures of herself to a London agency. It wasn't much, but it was a tit in the door. <laughs> Right, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Dave, Johnny and Christian have four points, but Sean, Ulrika and Michael are the winners. They have eight points. <laughs> well, thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. It's Griff Reese Jones and their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Carr. Hello, and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys, and statistics. Did you know, for example, a quarter of people don't know what kidneys do? They make steak pies delicious. <laughs> One in three pet owners has made an unplanned visit to the vet in the past two years. I don't know, it's just a whim, put him down. <laughs> and one in ten housewives plan ahead when it comes to evening meals. They plan to eat oysters under the stars with a Brazilian tango instructor. And then they sigh, take another swig of gin and put the fish fingers on. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave, Fiona, Griff, what have the nation been talking about this week? Well, like it or law, the I'm a celebrity, get me out of here rumbles on with uh, David Guest as the unlikely star. And he is a bit odd, but he, he's good value, I think. Do you not? Yeah. And Lisa Minnelli said this week, they asked her opinion on his, uh, his venture into the jungle and she said, I hope he gets fucked by a kangaroo. <laughs> Not only is that a great statement, but it would make a great Bush Tucker trial. It would, wouldn't it? <laughs> You're getting fucked by a kangaroo, you've got to get the stars out of its pocket. <laughs> like that. that is a great One trial. Thing that I never understand about this is what's a kangaroo doing in the jungle? Exactly. exactly. I've never understood. I thought a kangaroo lived in the desert. And every they time do indeed. They, when they're in the bush, they're always eating kangaroo testicles mm. and things like this. Mm. this is some poor kangaroo's gone on a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> and it's happened to just wander into this thing. What about Jan Leeming, who's, who's there saying, I'm not a girl's girl? Well, clearly by her five failed marriages, she's not a boy's girl either, is she? <laughs> when you first heard that, you went, five, five divorces, that's a lot. Yeah. And then you see her for about half an hour and go, no, no, fair enough, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've all made mistakes, get out of that. <laughs> yeah, take the house, fuck off. <laughs> 
Any, any thoughts on I'm a Celebrity over here? Have you been watching it, Sean? You love that kind of thing, don't you? I watch it from behind the sofa, groaning. <laughs> It reached its lowest ebb when they tried to get that earwig out of Jason Donovan's bum. <laughs> Dr. Bob got involved, and I, I, I'm fascinated by Dr. Bob because a few series ago he was called Dr. Bob, and then last series he was called Medic Bob. <laughs> and the last thing you want when someone's got things up your bum is to go, uh, Are you Dr. Bob? Well, Medic Bob, actually. <laughs> actually, it's just Bob. <laughs> I don't even work on the show. <laughs> Go on, Bill. There's no need to do that, <laughs> mate. Uh, right. I don't think that adds a lot. So. <laughs> Why don't you do this? <laughs> Am I the only one in thinking that I don't find it terribly edifying to be in the jungle eating wild animals and insects? Hey, you don't mind it when the woodpeckers are doing it? Yeah. They love a bit of grub, the woodpecker. <laughs> They're at it like woodpeckers. <laughs> 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 You're going to do that after every bit. Just go. Let them have their little childish aside. It's all right. We'll carry on. But it is right. What, <laughs> what show do you think you're on? <laughs> oh, so you're not supposed to eat insects now, you know? No, it's you're not a vegetarian. So much... I'm not a vegetarian. Let's not go there. But by... <laughs> That's not a country, vegetarian. <laughs> To be perfectly honest, the eating of them I don't find quite so objectionable as the, you know, isn't it scary to have about 20 rats thrown over you and that sort of thing. I don't think those rats enjoy it very much. I imagine if you're a rat, there's not many opportunities on modern television. <laughs> there's all yeah. sorts of them. There's been some fantastic documentaries about rats. I myself have featured rats on television in wildlife documentaries many, many times. <laughs> yes, I even came out in favour of rats because people always go on about Ratty in Wind in the Willows, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, who was in fact a water vole. <gasps> yeah. And yet, and yet, if you look at a rat without knowing that it's a rat and it is swimming in the water, you say, isn't that lovely? Not in the bath, though. Whether it's a. It's <laughs> in my bath. <laughs> is that a water vole or a rat? <laughs> Either way, I'm going to fucking kill it. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Yes, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, was the number two talking point this week. Seeing Scott Henshaw refuse to eat an anus was like watching Red Rum pull up at Beecher's Brook. <laughs> I think the cruelest thing about I'm a celebrity is that they put a bunch of D-list celebs in the jungle during panto season. <laughs> Sean, Bill and Lee, what have the nation been talking about this week? The soaring, spiralling, ever-increasing, rising, rocketing, cost of the Olympics. Do you know how much it's going to cost? Uh, opposition critics are claiming that it's going to uh, cost London £8 billion when the original estimate was £2.4 billion. I know some Latvian blokes in Charlotte do it for half the price. <laughs> and no VAT. <laughs> it just proves every builder is the same, no matter what level. They could build a country mm. and they're lying fuckers. They are. <laughs> oh, I could do that for £10 million. Yeah, all right, you've got the job. They're liars. They just, all do it. I think they're just optimistic. They're naturally <laughs> optimistic people builders. They look at it, they go, yeah. we could do this in a week. Yeah. This is easy. <laughs> what do you need? A running track and a pool, not a bother. <laughs> where exactly, where is the Olympic village going to be? Exactly. In uh, Stratford. Is it Stratford? Mm. Sort of out Edmonton way, that sort of way, isn't it? No, no? Stratford way. Stratford way, all right. <laughs> but it's sort of in the east end. Edmonton's more out Edmonton way. And yes. If you want to get there, you go up sort of towards Edmonton. Do you? But if you want to get to Stratford, you sort of head towards Stratford <laughs> and eventually you're sort of in Stratford. Just so you know, this is the official directions for the marathon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> OK, well, let's have a look and see if the Olympics is one of the top five most talked about things this week. <laughs> Yes, indeed it is. The Olympics is going to cost us £8 billion. That is disgusting. For that sort of money, we could have another three weeks in Iraq. <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about this week? Uh, well, we think it was the former KGB agent spy who was uh, poisoned in London. The Kremlin said it had nothing to do with them, so... That's them ruled out, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, that is conclusive. I wonder who did it. As yeah. the full investigation, we phoned the Kremlin, we said, were you involved? They said, no. <laughs> no, we definitely weren't, so... Oh, bye. <laughs> I've got to say, I think, I think there's also a sort of slightly racist thing here, you know, that we assume that this sort of thing could only possibly happen with Russians. But it can happen in other countries. It can happen in this country, I absolutely... Well, it did happen in this country. Well, I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, let's see if it's one of the top five talking points this week. Yeah. 
Yes, this is the sad story that a former Russian spy was poisoned and died in London this week. The former KGB spy said, I ate in a restaurant last night in London and something disagreed with me. The Russian government. <laughs> what else have the nation been talking about? Tom Cruise, getting married? You're broken hearted. Too short. I was talking to Griff. <laughs> <laughs> They got married in Rome, which is a bit odd because they're a Scientology faith. Yeah. They get married in Rome, in Italy. Why is that odd? Well, it's, it's like Catholics getting married at a Star Trek convention. Isn't it really? <laughs> Interestingly, the, the um, critics of the, of the marriage have said that Scientology is a made-up religion. Well, <laughs> unlike every other religion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Christianity. Far from that. Far from that, isn't it? It's like, uh, no, no, he could walk on water and he could, yeah, he could raise the dead and just eat that. That's his body and that's his body. <laughs> That's perfectly normal, obviously. There's a line yeah, it is normal compared to the Scientologists who believe that we're all exiled aliens called Thetans. <laughs> I'm a Scientologist. Are Don't you a lie. Scientologist? Yeah, I am. I'm not surprised. I'm a fuck. Look at your face. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill, you're a Scientologist. No, Lee, Lee, they really all believed you. <laughs> Bring it on, Griff. <laughs> Lee, you're one of the few people Scientology turned down. <laughs> Bloody thetons, though. They come over here, don't they? Inhabiting our bodies, shagging our women. <laughs> <laughs> Piss off. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Tom and Katie's wedding is up there. <laughs> yes, Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes tied the knot this week in Italy. It was a traditional Jedi wedding. Sorry, Scientology, whatever. <laughs> At the end of the wedding, the minister said, you may now stand on a telephone directory and kiss the bride. <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers. What is the last story in the top five? Uh, we think it possibly could be the government has had this wheeze to have super nannies for teaching parenting skills to kids with asbos and stuff like that. Um, and they seem to be like uh, influenced by TV programmes, the government at the moment. Yeah, they do love it, don't they? Jamie's school dinners. I know right. super nanny. Yeah, how does Tony Blair get so much time to watch so much early evening TV? I mm. don't know how he does it. The thing is, a lot of our wartime leaders mm. have been bothered about winning the war. He's taking a very sort of laissez-faire attitude. <laughs> also, <laughs> watching a lot more telly and going, yeah. oh, fuck it. We'll never win this. <laughs> I think you should watch the news. <laughs> Probably doesn't like it, it comes out of it quite badly, doesn't he? Yeah. Really? Also, how can he get his, his math so wrong? There must be how many thousands and thousands and thousands of kids have got asbos, and he, he's only sending 70. Yeah, but they're which... super nannies. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. these, these ladies can fly. <laughs> the best way to deal with this is get all those kids with behavioural problems, put them on a plane, and fly them to a country where you're allowed to give them a good clout. <laughs> Saudi Arabia, something like that. That's more than a good clout, Sean. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have a look and see if it's up there. Oh, hey. Hey. Yes, Tony Blair has announced plans to hire super nannies to help parents. The government's new transport policy has been revealed. Blair plans to pimp our rides. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's one point to Sean's team and four points to Dave's team. Oh, thank you. The next round is called the poll with a hole. Sean's team to go first. While on a job, one in four builders, what? Well, I'd just like to say, at 4-1 down, we've never come back from a score like that, so we actually just concede. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, that's, that's the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. We've never had this had before. It'd just be the test card for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> I do look a bit like that girl from the test card, Jim. <laughs> Any thoughts on this? One in four builders? <laughs> it's obvious. It's while on a job, one in four builders does some fucking work and the <laughs> other three watch. <laughs> Is it compliments a young lady on her massive tits? <laughs> <laughs> if only it stopped at that, I have to say, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Well, they compliment you as well on your massive tits. <laughs> 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 You're right, Bill! Hey! Hey. Hey. No, it's Bill. B-I-W. It's Bill. So, and you can tell how they're spelling it just from them shouting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hey. I've never yet been called by my name properly by Bill. It's always Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it's not always Bill. What do they shout apart from Boo? It's just like, uh, do you like me? And things like that. <laughs> <laughs> do you like me? I've worked at loads of good sites. I've never heard anyone say, good. do you like me, Bill? Because <laughs> <laughs> I like you. <laughs> These builders, they don't have big black moustaches and they're in village people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
the area of North London I live in, one in four builders ends up shagging the lonely housewife on the kitchen table whilst the husband is yeah, away. Bird yeah, not bird watching. What were you doing, Bill? Hey, sorry, Bill, were you really bird watching with those binoculars? <laughs> or are you just, hang on, he's giving her one. <laughs> he only came to do the kitchen. <laughs> I can give you a clue, I can tell you it's something to do with their unexpected eating habits. Gourmet food in their packed uh, Well, you're, you're pretty close with that. Fruit. A salad. Correct answer. <laughs> yeah, this is extraordinary, ladies and gentlemen. While on a job, one in four builders regularly has sushi or salad for lunch. Which begs the question, why are they such fat bastards? <laughs> OK, Dave, Fiona and Griff, on their first mission, 75% of astronauts what? Never left Earth. <laughs> do you think they landed on the moon? Do you think that's a genuine thing? Nah. Well, you can see the shadows of the photos. Well, there's proof if ever we needed it. Oh, <laughs> And the flag's flying. The flag's oh. flying? Oh. But there's wind, but there's wind on the moon. The moon's very windy. Oh, the he's been there. The moon is not windy. Yes, it is very windy. It is not it's windy, windy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. otherwise Let's they'd have built this. a windmill up there no, or something like that. I'm prepared to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the hardest man in England on this one. <laughs> it's bloody windy up there. Wind? Wind is no, air blowing around, you yeah. see. It's air blowing about. That's yeah. right, air on the moon. Wind makes it come in your face in the air. Of course there's there air, on the, air on the moon, on the moon. Oh, then shut up! I can't believe I'm playing you an inch four on. <laughs> All right, know what? Okay. Easy. Yeah. Hey, I think we've upset Fiona. Let's no. all just take a moment. Oh, there's air. There's no oxygen on the moon. Oh, there is air. It just hasn't got any oxygen in it. And it What's it made of, then? Yoghurt? What's it made of, then? Yoghurt? <laughs> Stuff. <laughs> you would make the best science professor in the world. <laughs> Other stuff, <laughs> Moonie <Mouliere. laughs> Write it down. <laughs> On their first mission, 75% of astronauts what? Play with their own piss, like this. Woo, woo. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> they eat the packed lunch before they get to the stratosphere. <laughs> Nothing left for the rest, no. Demand a lot of air miles from NASA. <laughs> No, I think you'll find there's no air uh, up there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it is air. It's moon air. We're doing a whole series about it soon. Yes. About <laughs> air. Or, just for fun, one of them goes... Tss, can anyone hear that? <laughs> I bet at least one of them goes, are we there yet? It's <laughs> <laughs> taken <Second> ages. <laughs> But you didn't have to do that in a northern accent. Yeah, I did, because I was trying to be stupid. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's something to do with their stomachs. Any thoughts? I wish they hadn't had a curry last night. <laughs> Throw up! Throw up is exactly the right oh, answer. Well done, Griff. He did that one. Good, we got a point. Yes, on their first mission, 75% of astronauts throw up. Of course, the other 25% blow up. <laughs> It's not my fault. Talk to NASA. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean, Bill and Lee have two points. Dave, Fiona and Griff have five points. <laughs> That's what going on. <laughs> Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I'll give the panellists a simple statement and all they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. OK, this is for everyone. Let's have a look at a clip to illustrate the statistic. Suda. I don't seem to have an email from you again. Really? I sent it at three. Well, it's not here. I don't understand. I, I sent it. I thought you wrote down how to do it. Yes. Well, perhaps you wrote it wrong with your dyslexia and all. Is there? That was a clip from a training video for office managers. If you've got dyslexia, there is a number you can call, but pointless giving it to you, you might be able to write it down, won't you? <laughs> and, <coughs> your related statistic, 16% of bosses have made a decision based on their horoscope. Do you think that's true or false? What are you? I'm a Virgo. Ah. <laughs> what are you then, Fiona? I'm a Piscean. A Piscean? Least likely to kill somebody in your family, if you're a Piscean. Least likely to kill someone... <laughs> you are clutching at straws. <laughs> Here's some advice. Don't put that in a personal ad. <laughs> Tom uh, Bowers. Apart from the magpies, obviously. 
You're going to see two magpies, haven't you? That's typical well, you're in the shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on, you must see two magpies every day, surely? Uh, several. Would you call yourself lucky? Absolutely. Every time I go past a building site, somebody goes... <laughs> I like you. Well, and then you get hey, lucky. Bill! Bill, come here! <laughs> It's ever happened before, but I imagine this weekend it's going to be happening a lot. <laughs> Builders, if you're watching, please. <laughs> for us. Can you make bird noises? I don't Some know. of them, yeah. I can make the one of one of a bird hitting yeah. the pavement. <laughs> it's the only one I do, really. Would you like? I would like a chaffinch. Yeah. No, chaffinch, all right. It's like a fast bowler running up, and so he goes, want to little bit bowl. That's you know. Cone Doe. No, he comes up. That's what the, the bird makes that noise. <laughs> Did Bill just stand up then? Amazing, that's extraordinary. A man actually gets out of his seat and is smaller than when he was sitting down. <laughs> Bill Oddie, I've had it up to here. <laughs> have you really had Bill Oddie up to there? <laughs> you bloody haven't. Yeah, I used to work on a building site, Lee. <laughs> I bet you don't know what this one is. <laughs> this is for true, this is true. It goes... Uh... <laughs> That's not an impression of a bird. It is! That's a midlife crisis, is no. what that is, Bill. <laughs> it's one of the best loved birds in the country. Is it a uh, blackbird on a moped? <laughs> <laughs> is, is it a forgetful sparrow? <laughs> uh... <laughs> Remember what it is? No, it's, it's a it's puffin. Me. Is it? Yes. Ah, oh, very well loved. I'm always bumping into puffins. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just remind us, and I think you may find this amusing, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to remind you what the question is. 16% of bosses have made a decision based on their horoscopes. <laughs> true or false? The fuck are you people talking about? <laughs> Sixteen percent of bosses have made a decision based on their horoscopes, true or false? Well, it's, we think it's true. You yeah. think it's true? Oh, I. What do you think? We you think, think it's it? false. I think it's possible, but unlikely. Mm. <laughs> Thanks for that, Lee. That's really cleared I things up. Really... <laughs> I can tell you that the answer is true. Yeah. Yay! So at the end of that round, I can tell you it's two points for Sean's team and six points for Dave's team. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls. It's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Britain's favourite noise. <laughs> is it that honking noise that women's breasts make when you go out? <laughs> <laughs> that last one was Jordan. <laughs> is it a... That's the biggest hit I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, it's not that. I mean, it might be. It isn't that. Britain's favourite noise. How about. <laughs> what was yeah. that? That's an albatross shitting on Bill Oddie. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be delighted. Albatrosses are quite wet, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's yeah. shat in my it's face. Just a <laughs> Go on, what do you think favourite noise it... might be? Oh, that is oh, that. You're so close with that. Oh. It's to do with glug, 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 exactly glug, the right glug, answer. Oh. Yes, Britain's favourite noise is the glug of wine as it pours into a wine glass. I think that statistic is skewed by the fact that the people most likely to stop and talk to a woman with a clipboard are winos. <laughs> Next question: thing most likely to make men cry. Catching your knob and you zip. <laughs> I don't understand how anyone does that, because normally when I do my trousers up, I've put my penis away. Yeah. <laughs> I've had the presence of mind to finish my, my urination yeah. and yeah. put the penis away and then do my trousers up. I don't yeah. shake it, then go, ah! <laughs> oh, I forgot to put my penis away. No, the thing is, though, so it would be a miracle if I was in a toilet in the first place, if I was that bleeding stupid. <laughs> I'd probably be standing in the There's food no hall at Harris, pissing on some cheese. The <laughs> thing most likely to make men cry, Griff? It's a little pony with a very long mane <laughs> getting separated from its mothers and getting lost in the enchanted forest. <laughs> and then, after a lot of adventures, finally finding its way... <laughs> back! <laughs> ..to its mother! <laughs> ..and the rest of the herd! Speaking for the older generation, I would have to say that it's accepting that your daughter's friends simply think of you as 
her dad. <laughs> so you're crying because you can't fuck your daughter's friends? <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> High five, Bill Oddie. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that is perhaps the most honest answer <laughs> we've ever had on this show. A great image, isn't it? Just so we go up to Bill Oddie and go, oh, you must be Joanne's dad. <laughs> Welcome to Springwatch. I've got some binoculars. I'm in a shed. <laughs> My daughter's having a sleepover. <laughs> Should be a hell of a show. <laughs> OK, thing most likely to make men cry, it's something you do in the kitchen. Oh, onions. 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 Onions is exactly That's the right answer, correct. Oh, well, well. That sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Bill and Lee have two points, but our winners are Dave, Fiona and Griff with eight points. <laughs> To all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 60% of cosmetic surgery patients are disappointed with the results, although they look pleasantly surprised. <laughs> A quarter of the over 50s are failing to save. It's control S, you old buffers. <laughs> While abroad, two thirds of Brits are more sexually adventurous. So, look out, Iraq. <laughs> One in four Brits claims that their post has been lost or stolen. Well, I can reassure you, it was definitely stolen. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking point. <laughs> <laughs> We needed an S on the end of it, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right, that, 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 talking point. Yeah. <laughs> Do the S again. <laughs> yeah. <it's... laughs> Could be one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, Jade, and Chris. What have the nation been talking about this week? Uh, take that aback with the uh, Inland Revenue tour. I think it is. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's not front page news. Surely to God. It's... They've got no. The Beatles have got a hit album. Oh, right? hang on. There's a lady going through the menopause as we speak. <laughs> That's how take that fan speak. What? At Newsbrows, they just go, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> how are you today? Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a cup of tea? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Childline set up a, a hotline right after take that yeah. and split up. In 1996, the Samaritans set up a special helpline for yeah. distraught fans. Yes. It's the only time the Samaritans have ever been allowed to use the words, oh, grow up. <laughs> 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 yes. On the phone. <laughs> Just fucking grow up. <laughs> Why are they called to take that? What's the name mean? On their video, they had the thing saying, if you don't like it, throw it in the bin. Take that. That's my favourite thing you've ever said. <laughs> Those are the instructions that come with their video. Well, they said it, they said it. I promise, I watched it in my caravan with my friend. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, yes. I imagine that was a party. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if take that at number one is up there. Yes, it is. 
Yes, Take That have returned to the top of the charts. The reunion took longer than expected to put together because no one could remember who Howard was. <laughs> they spent six months rehearsing with a bloke from the Halifax advert. <laughs> Vic, Sean and John, what have the nation been talking about this week? I think they're talking about Michael Grade going from the uh, BBC over to ITV. You know, they're saying he got something like eight million and he's saying he didn't do it for the money. No. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> he's genuinely saying that, though. He's kind of come yeah. out in the press and gone, it's not about the money. You don't... I don't do a job for the money. What the hell do you do it for? He said he, said he did it for the challenge. The challenge being getting all that money home in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> ITV said it was a real coup. It's not, is it? No. A real coup would be when ITV's tanks actually roll into Television Centre. <laughs> that would be... A real coup? That would be an actual coup. <laughs> ITV have done it because ITV apparently is not doing very well at the moment. So they've stolen Chief from stealing. Channel One. Stolen, I mean. Stolen. <laughs> Chief from Channel One to come over and do it. But what really muddles my brain is... <laughs> <laughs> What muddles your brain? No, what muddles my brain is if they've got all that money to offer him, why don't they just make better TV programmes? <laughs> I hope he finally ends Coronation Street, because this first series is really dragging on. <laughs> you know what he's doing to Coronation Street? What? He's changing. He's going to be CSI Weatherfield. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's up there. Yes, indeed it is. Yes, Michael Grave has announced he's moving to ITV. ITV needs him, they're in trouble. I tried to tape the mint the other night and my Sky Plus box started crying. <laughs> Dave, Chris, Jade, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Chris. Hiya. Hiya. What have you been talking about? Oh, well, uh, I've been talking about the, uh, this royal editor of the News of the World, Dave. Oh, yeah, they've been listening in to people's phone calls. <laughs> yes, I was listening to stuff. But they've actually been tapping into the voicemail, that's how they do it, they hack into yeah. the voicemail and put some sort of code in. If you were phoning up a royal like Prince Charles, you wouldn't leave like an important message on voice. If he doesn't answer, you're not going to leave, it's not going to happen, is it? You're not going to hey. pick up any real news. It's not going to be like the Queen phoning Prince Charles and going, Hello Charles, Mum here, I think I'll abdicate, give us a ring later on. You know, it, <laughs> it's not going to happen, is it? No, you but, text that, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> The Queen doesn't use a phone. She does? She doesn't use... No, she hasn't. She has a, a big chain of butlers and they just whisper messages along. <laughs> <laughs> Go for miles. <laughs> Let's see if it's up there. <laughs> yes, indeed it is. A News of the World journalist has admitted tapping royal phones. The journalist will soon be sending messages of his own to his cellmate in Morse code by clenching and unclenching his buttocks. <laughs> Is that a dot or a dash? Please get out of my bin. <laughs> Sean, over to you. What else have the nation been talking about this week? The Pope went to Turkey, which sounds like the start of a joke, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> the Pope went to Turkey. <laughs> the Pope ate a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and he went to Turkey and uh, there was a lot of protests. I think the interesting about it was, was when he looked at his diary on the Monday and he went, Turkey, Wednesday, who put this in? <laughs> it's dangerous for him to go to Turkey, though, because it's a very sunny country and uh, popes can die in those pope mobiles if the archbishop who's driving them doesn't crack the window when he uh, <laughs> are and you saying popes die in hot cars yeah <laughs> popes die in hot <laughs> pope mobiles that's what happens that may be the most limiting safety campaign ever launched <laughs> if you can save just if one, one life, life yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i can tell you that the pope isn't one of the most talked about things this week but he did make an official visit to turkey the pope ever the diplomat was very happy with the warm welcome he received he said, at least I think it was a warm welcome, from what I could understand of their jibber-jabber language. <laughs> Figures or buzzers, what else have people been talking about this week? Uh, we think it's the fallout uh, from this KGB poisoning. That still rumbles on. There seems to be three suspects. It's either Putin and the Kremlin, it's either enemies of Putin and the Kremlin, who are trying to discredit him, or it's a group of ex-KGB spies led by a guy called Igor the Poisoner. <laughs> The police said the, the death was suspicious. <laughs> yeah. I think they should upgrade it to yeah. fucking suspicious. <laughs> Is he having a traditional Russian burial where they put them in a, a little coffin inside a bigger coffin? Is that a much bigger coffin? <laughs> <laughs> much bigger. <laughs> I think you're fine, David. Traditional Russian burial, you have to dig your own grave. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't blame me, blame Stalin. <laughs> no, on a serious note, we indicted her because it was on the planes. Yeah. It was in a bag. Yeah. yeah. Unless they put it in TK Maxx, you'll be fine. <laughs>
They found it in a restaurant. They found it in two hotels. On a humpback whale. <laughs> <laughs> humpback whale's got a ten-foot dick, hasn't it? Sounds like the start of a song. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> oh, the humpback whale's got a ten-foot cock. Do da, do da. The humpback whale's got a ten-foot cock and it's so hard as a rock. That's I a <laughs> I think I've won money on you singing in the first ten minutes. <laughs> you have gone quite a long way to kill him. This is, it's a lot of effort, isn't it? Uh, to it kill somebody by radiation. Why don't we just you shoot him? No. Whoa. no we're going to kill him by radiation. I think maybe the KGB are having some kind of union issues with their snipers. <laughs> <laughs> but the KGB, the interesting thing about this is the KGB aren't called the KGB anymore. They're called the FSB, which worries me, because I think I bought a sofa from them. <laughs> Let's see if the Russian poisoning is up there. Yes, it is. This is the ongoing poisoning story. Doctors are advising anyone who's come into contact with polonium-210 to shit their liver out and then move house. <laughs> <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about? Uh, people have been talking about the fact that England lost the first test of the ashes. What have they been saying, then? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> or, oh, you knew it. Yeah. <laughs> Our best, best chance we've got to keep the ashes is give up cricket. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't play their best bowler, which is a good idea, because they should, you know... Who's he, then? Monty Panasar. Actually, Australia have never uh, declared independence, so technically, we always win. <laughs> uh, Vic, do you watch cricket? I like the fellow with the glass eye. What okay, called? What's that bloke you talked about before? Who? Who up for that? That cricketer that you mentioned. Monty Panesar. Him, with the glass eye. Has <laughs> he got a glass <laughs> eye? Yeah. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I can <laughs> prove it! You can prove it. Uh. What's that say there? <laughs> <Look>. <laughs> That's evidence. That's proof. Look, what does it say there? Proof. It's proof. The right. <laughs> thing is, it's not Looks him, because like he's got a turban, Monty Panasar. He it's took it off on that shot. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a sec. That's not a photo. <laughs> I've never seen what the ashes look like. So when you say ashes, I do presume, obviously, when someone dies, that they get turned into ashes. <laughs> but Sorry, in this what, case, did you I do that? I didn't realise you were counting. Can, can we have that again? <laughs> when someone dies, I don't know, something the like that. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I don't want to die. <laughs> She's showing people who... I don't want to die, it's me. <laughs> I don't want to die. My face doesn't want to die, neither are these fellas. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if the ashes is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, the ashes continue. I guess if England wants to enjoy a sporting victory, we're just going to have to wait until Wimbledon. Come on, Tim. <laughs> At the end of that round, it's two points for Sean's team and three points for Dave's team. <laughs> the next round is called the poll with a hole. Dave, Jade and Chris, here's your first one. 33% of young men say they would what just to impress their friends? Anything. They're mad, they're idiots. Climb a pile on, bum a goat, punch a nun. Anything. 33% <laughs> of young men say they would spunk on a cracker and eat it just to impress their friends. <laughs> oh. 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 On a cracker? Oh. No, but that's a, that's a big thing yeah. in the States with college and college. Digestive, of yeah. course. Maybe yeah. a hot <laughs> <as well. laughs> Fig roll? That's not it. I don't, I don't like fig rolls. I'm allergic. I'm not allergic to them, but I won't eat them. Why? <laughs> Do you not when agree with them? When I was a them? little kid, I went to a party <laughs> and there was a game of pin the tail on... This is true. Pin the tail on the donkey. And I cheated. I went like that. And I pinned it straight on, first go. Obviously, I thought, got away with it. Mm. And the prize was some fig rolls. <laughs> and not only did I cheat, I was greedy as well. And I ran off and I ate all the fig rolls in one go. <laughs> then I was sick. <laughs> and strangely, the thing I didn't learn from that was don't cheat. I learned, don't like fig rolls. <laughs> 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 Oh. Thirty-three <laughs> percent of young men say they would what just to impress their friends? Would have a willy implant. A willy implant? <laughs> you sure make I'm. it longer. I watched a programme on it the other day. Don't willy extension. Ah, see. 
<laughs> I'm thinking of having a conservatory put on the end of mine. <laughs> oh, for the summer months. It's going to be a devil to get the planning permission, isn't it? <laughs> With something that size, Chris, it is difficult, yes. <laughs> Uh, Vic, what do you think young men do to impress their friends? Well, it's obvious that they uh, spend a week in a coal bunker. <laughs> Did you calculate pi? <laughs> 7,000 points. Uh, it's not... No, it's, it's not pi, 7. but it is to do with eating something. No, when I said calculate pi, I meant really? the mathematical equation, not pi. Yeah, but words can mean two things at the same time. <laughs> Eat a really hot curry. Exactly yeah. the right Yay! answer. Yay! Yes. Yes, 33% of young men say they would eat an unbearably hot curry just to impress their friends. Yes, I'll have a number 68 uh, with a number 33 followed by an extremely painful number 2. <laughs> Sean, Vicar and John, 99% of the over 50 say that what has got more difficult over the last 10 years? Being under 40. <laughs> Firstly. <laughs> but there's still 1% that it's not a problem for. <laughs> Uh, who is that person? <laughs> you who? The time travellers, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I can't live forever. I'm just not able to die. It's the doctor who can only live forever. This, see, this is really scary because I talk about it like it's actually real. <laughs> <laughs> How frightening is that? Quite frightening close up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I over 50s, uh, imagine uh, Countdown. It's got a lot tougher over the last 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> your brain's going Indeed. smaller and smaller. Because it gets, that's how you die, isn't it? Your brain, as you get older, gets smaller and oh. smaller and smaller, and then it pops out of your ear. And then you die. <laughs> I t I'm speaking as an over 50 here. Remembering stuff, as, as you get older, you just forget all sorts of shit. When it's like if you're looking for scissors, you have to incorporate a little mime when you get to a certain age. You're going like, scissors, scissors, scissors. <laughs> if that's going to help, as if that's some sort of scissor diviner that's going to go, scissors, there they are. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> No, that only came along a couple of years ago. I remember I went on holiday, came back, there was two new phenomenons. Happy slapping and Sudoku. <laughs> Which one did you go for? <laughs> <laughs> I used to happy slap people who are doing Sudoku. <laughs> <laughs> OK, 99% of the over 50s say that what has got more difficult over the last 10 years? Come on, Vic, we need these points. What, playing the bazooki? I don't know. <laughs> Walking up the stairs. Oh, sorry. It's all right. Sorry, I just ain't coming to my head. Best to get it out quickly. You don't want any stuff clogging it up in there. <laughs> I'll You've tell you what, I'll give you a clue. It's to do with, um, it's to do with being all fingers and thumbs. Opening a milk carton. <laughs> I'll give you that. Opening packaging. Opening packaging. Yeah. <laughs> you got yes, 99% of the over 50s say that opening packaging has got more difficult in the last 10 years. The survey was originally about Scottish devolution, but they wittered on about packaging anyway. <laughs> So at the end of that round, Sean, Vic and John have three points. Dave, Jade and Chris have four points. Well <laughs> Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. Everyone, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. Hey, praise the Lord, Jesus is Lord. Get the writing on the back. Going, so. Well, it's all fixed in Jesus' name. We're just, we're just standing in faith. Amen. Waiting for it to get. Amen. To... That's right. Have you got a spare wheel? <laughs> well, I don't know whether it's there, but I know in faith that we've got one. Amen. I didn't know that we had no MOT because we were on our way to a glory meeting. I knew we didn't have a worry. You see, God doesn't see the MOT. Because we've got the Lord Jesus Christ with us, each and every one of us on this bus, we've been saved today. We are very, very lucky. God doesn't see the MOT. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. He doesn't like it if you're untaxed, though. <laughs> it was your related statistic. 62% of Brits <coughs> say they would believe in God if they saw a man walk on water. Is that true or false? It could be ice. It could be walking on ice. Yeah. yeah. Technically, yeah. on ice, there's a thin layer of water on top that keeps the ice smooth. So you are walking on water? So there yeah. is a God. <laughs> <laughs> Many Brits are quite cynical. I think 62% of Brits wouldn't believe in God if they saw God 
walking on water. <laughs> David Copperfield walked through the Great Wall of China once and saw it. So he could do it, couldn't he? He made the Taj Mahal disappear. The Indian tourist board were livid. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, do you believe in God? I don't just want to sit and say, no, I don't believe in God and I get in grave and that's the end of me. I'd like to think that I could come yeah, back as a bee or something. <laughs> <laughs> do you know most people now have in their wills that they want to be buried with their mobile phone on a full charge? <sighs> Just in case they're not dead and they wake up, they can call somebody to oh. get them out. They're not going to get a signal. <laughs> if I was buried with my phone and I'd like to wake up, I'd stop phoning people up going, Oh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I never liked you. Uh. There was a rapper in the States buried in his Cadillac because they couldn't find a coffin that was big enough for him. He was so big and they buried him in the Cadillac. Get you out of your ass with a crane if you're overweight in America. Yeah, yeah. That's a bit harsh, that. Yeah. I think the best way to get someone out, someone really big, out of a house is with those mincing machines. <laughs> <laughs> does yeah. make me worry, though. What? Because I like to eat a bit, and if I ever did overindulge more than what I normally do, and I did fall asleep and then woke up and I was, like, massive, how would I get out of So you're talking about actually you're having a big meal and then just going... Jay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you live in a cartoon. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Well, maybe, maybe she's got a ripcord. She just goes... <laughs> 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 OK, well, back, back to God. 62% um, of Brits say they would believe in God if they saw a man walk on water. Is that true or false? We're so used to illusionists, brilliant illusionists like yeah. Mr Blaine or Paul Daniels even. You know, <laughs> the way he passed himself off as a magician all those years. <laughs> I think they'd say, no, it's false. Like, what about over here? What do you think? We're well, going to say true. I'm true. captain's decision, yeah, 62%. Right. True. True. Well, I can tell you the answer is false. Oh, yes. But yes. Sean's got the point there. Oh. It's obviously false. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, just 20% of Brits say they would believe in God if they saw a man walk on water. Interestingly, 37% of people would believe in God if they saw a man come back from the dead. Have they not seen Deal or No Deal? It's happened. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's four points for Sean's team and four points for Ooh. Dave's team. Ooh. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls and it's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Britain's most disappointing day trip. Basra. I think the most disappointing day trip would be to a diabetic's birthday party. <laughs> what the fuck? You wouldn't get any cake. Yeah. But if you like hummus... Mm. <laughs> Vic, you've been on a few day trips in your time, surely? Um, the most disappointing one was the sun. <laughs> Very hot and sweaty. Have well, you any proof that you went to the sun? Probably, somewhere. <laughs> Most disappointing day trip. Is it Madame Tussauds after a fire? <laughs> you are absolutely right, it is Madame Tussauds. Oh. Yay. Yeah. Yes, Britain's most disappointing day trip is Madame Tussauds. It's basically novelty candles. <laughs> Top thing to do before you're ten. Does it get to nine? <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be right up there, isn't it? Surely. <laughs> Surely. <laughs> I think it's appear on you've been framed falling backwards off a slide and crushing a hamster. <laughs> <laughs> Get adopted by Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Neverland and drink Jesus juice. Yeah. Oh. oh, come on! Yeah. Right. You all thought it. <laughs> I tell you, when I was ten, if they'd give me the option. <laughs> you want to do what with me? Yeah. There's a fun fair. <laughs> I'll be right over, yeah. <laughs> Vic, any thoughts? Well, it'll be ride a sea serpent to Banbury Cross. <laughs> no doubt. Do you have any proof, Vic? I've got a speeding charge coming up. Could you come and draw a picture of my car going quite slow? No worries, I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> you think you could... I'll do, I'll do a picture of you in your car with slow written above it. 
<laughs> well, that is all they'll need, cos they've sent me a picture of the car going quite fast. <laughs> <laughs> Why not just have him not in the car at all? Water ski. Exactly, I'll put someone else in the car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brezhnev. <laughs> <laughs> OK, top thing to do before you ten. It's an overnight thing. Ham! Correct. Yes, the top thing to do before your tent is camp out in the garden. Camping with your child is a great way to teach them about wildlife. That's an owl, that's a fox, that rustling sound is a released psychiatric patient <laughs> trying to get through our hedge. <laughs> right, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Vic and John have four points, but Dave, Jade and Chris have one with six points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience and all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. on 8 out of 10 cats. Housewives favorite, Alan Carr. The Jungle VIP, David Guest. And their captain, John Locke. And facing them tonight, the queen of comedy, Joan Rivers. The prince of pop world, Alex Shane. And their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Carr! Well, thanks very much. Hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, David Beckham is the only English player to have scored in three World Cups, with two personal assistants and a hairdresser. <laughs> the largest consumer of fortune cookies in Europe is Greece. Tomorrow you will eat hummus and have a hairy wife. And inbreeding causes three out of every ten Dalmatian dogs to go deaf in Disney's bleakest ever Christmas film. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave, Joan, Alex, what have the nation been talking about this week? Um, I think it's this great story that the NHS are going to offer dance lessons to fatties, basically, isn't it? They're going to, to help them with the obesity crisis. But the only way you're going to get fat people on the dance floor, I think, is by making the announcement, the buffet is now open. <laughs> <laughs> Just across the dance floor, though. And it's, a, it's another government gimmick, isn't it? It must be awful to see, like, here, like, a fat person dance. I'm not being over, but, you know, like, the... Uh, 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 well, that's the shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's going to be a slow process. I resent people talking about fatties like this. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. belong to Overeaters Anonymous. Really? Yes, this is the truth. And it's a, it, it's very, a lot of you here are thin, so, <laughs> but it is very, very sad because we all sit there and the women cry, cry and they go, no one loves me. And I always say, yes, yes, your butcher loves you, your, your, your baker loves you. One woman, I mean, last week, which right before I came over here, she was saying things like, I went on an airplane, and she was sobbing. And she said, and they made me buy two seats. And she just cried. And then I said, yes, but now you can have two meals. And she perked up. <laughs> <laughs> if we want to be fat, God damn it, we can be fat. That's the way it goes. Do you, David, are you, do, you, do you dance? No, I have, a, I have a cousin. You have a cousin? Yeah. <laughs> I have a cousin. Good answer. I have yeah. a cousin, 279 pounds. 279 pounds. He started ballroom dancing, Fred Astaire studio, met right. this lovely woman, five months, lost 100 pounds, got syphilis, and died. <laughs> if that's not being made into a musical, yeah. I... <laughs> I'm too club dancing, too literally, I think, really. <laughs> OK, well, uh... Let's have a look and see whether uh, Fatty Dance Glasses is one of the top five most talked about things this week. Yes, it is. Oh, just crept Yes, it was. Yes! Oh. 
All right, that's good. Sure, David, Aaron, uh, what else have the nation been talking about this week? I imagine a lot of people are quite upset uh, about England losing the Ashes. Well, I mean, virtually losing, losing the second test. And uh, I, think, I think it's stupid, really, because what we invented the game, we should just change the rules to suit us. <laughs> so in that match, we should have said, ah, ah, yeah, we just made this new rule up. If we have tomato soup, lowest score wins. <laughs> <laughs> So just stuff like that, just make up rules. If it's cloudy, oh, uh, no, you can't lose on a cloudy day. Just anything. Yeah. You've made the sport up, you can do what you want. You're not wearing the right pants. We win. <laughs> My dad tried to get me... He's always trying to get me sporting. He tried to get me interested in cricket, right? And I hate cricket, it's so boring. He told me that the Ashes, yeah, were Ellen Daniels from Neighbours. Right. <laughs> not obviously a spark of interest And I was there. like... Ellen Daniels, you say? <laughs> I was hooked. <laughs> Joan, have you ever seen a cricket match? I hate sports. You hate sports? I go to tennis matches, I don't even turn my head, you know? The ball doesn't come back, that idiot missed it. I mean, it, you know... <laughs> 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 I don't like sports. Yeah. Well, I don't like sport either. Really? Well, yeah. Because you look like quite a sporty... <laughs> yeah. Do you I know, get... have you not been... I you get... work out there, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, In I... indie clubs. <laughs> You a big cricket fan, David? You, you aware of cricket? No, more baseball. More baseball. Yeah. Have you heard of cricket? <laughs> of course. He forgets I was in the outback and I yeah. just it was with all these crickets all over there. Yeah. You knew Fina, right? Um, well, <laughs> I didn't actually watch... I meant to watch it, but um, at okay. the last minute I fell pregnant. <laughs> So it's been quite a few, quite a few crazy weeks for me as well. So uh, <laughs> turns out it was a scare. But no, no. What did she do? What did Fina do? She stole all the food. She stole all the food. Yeah. Really? She ate a few crickets too. Did she? Yeah. People have to eat testicles, don't they? On that no, it's an anus. Matt, Matt ate an anus. Someone had to eat an anus. Yeah. Oh, Matt. Matt ate an anus. Ate an anus. Matt ate an anus. Yeah. I see. I thought you said a marinated anus. No. For a second. <laughs> no. We had no, nothing, nothing to marinate there. <laughs> what do you eat it like a hula hoop like that? <laughs> On I'm a Celebrity, you claimed your maid's name was Vagina Kasiman. Is that true? Yes. Is she real? She's real. Are you sure she's I'm real? I'm positive she's as real as this set is real. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> her mother, and this is the truth, her mother loved her body part so much, she said if she had a girl, she was going to name it Vaginica. Then, no, this is true, not noble. <laughs> then she married... <laughs> A guy named Harry Seaman. Harry Seaman. <laughs> she became Vagina Seaman. What's her middle name? I have no idea. She hasn't got a middle name. I suppose she doesn't need one, really. <laughs> Mostly when she tells, tells her name, she's probably just wiping the drink they've just spat in her face. <laughs> <laughs> <What's your name>? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to the ashes. Should we have a look and see whether the ashes is one of the most talked about things this week? Incredibly, it's the second yes. most talked about thing. The Ashes is a best of five, although England have controversially opted to play worst of three. <laughs> Back over to you, Dave. What else have the nation been talking about this week? John reckons it's Christmas, well, too. Christmas and the politically correctness of Christmas. Oh, yeah. Where they're doing the Queen's speech, and that makes sense to me, and they're <coughs> having a Muslim lady do it. On Channel 4, yeah. yeah. It's the alternative Queen's speech is being done, yeah. done by a Muslim lady in a veil. They could have gone halfway. I mean, she's a, she's a fundamentalist Muslim. She wears the hijab, whatever, the niqab, which she covered. She could have actually really dressed up as Father Christmas with a big beard. <laughs> and, <pulled her. laughs> and gone, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> no, she, they could have gone halfway. The Muslim lady? Yes. I'm the one that sold her the veil from my New York website. Your New York website? Yeah, I, have a new, I sell veils. You sell veils? <laughs> yeah. Of course you do. What's, yeah. the, what, what's, the, what's the website called again? Yeah. Veils for Muslim women who want to speak in England. <laughs> oh, that website! That website! Dot <laughs> com, remember? Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all crazy. The, the internet now, they had the best day ever. And the, the, yeah, indeed, yeah, the best online day. $182 million in one day mm -hmm. in internet sales. And they looked it up, and it was Mel Gibson buying Nazi memorabilia. <laughs> and I thought that was fascinating. I like online shopping, because you know, like, when you're looking, if you get bored, you can just go to some porn, fill it, perks you up, 
and then you carry on chopping. Now, <laughs> I wish it was like that. Normal shopping. Do you know what I mean like you go around the Trafford Centre, board, someone shows you a cock, you're like, right now. <laughs> Auntie Janice. <laughs> That probably does happen. Oh, <laughs> 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 well, I just think it's so great. Everything gets decorated and it's pretty. And I'm Jewish and even I have a Christmas tree and I have a nativity scene. I have Jesus and Mary and the baby, but I'm Jewish, so we have a nanny. But it's just <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> and I dressed Mary better. <laughs> of course you I do. I put her in a nice Chanel suit and I gave her an Hermes bag. You're the mother of God, look it. And I just <laughs> made her look good. Shall we have a look and see if Christmas is one of the most talked about things this week? Of course oh, it is. The most talked yes, about thing this yes. week. If you follow a light in the sky in the Middle East these days, you'll end up tracking a Scud missile into a Palestinian hospital. <laughs> the true meaning of Christmas. <laughs> right, over to you, Sean. What else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it the moon? <laughs> Is it the moon? They're going to build a permanent base on the moon. It's going to take $10 billion, isn't it, to get people up to the moon. And you just know that if you go on the internet, EasyJet are doing it for £17.50. <laughs> <laughs> One way, no hand luggage, and Stelius going, it's out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> you just <don't. laughs> Joan Rivers, do you think Americans should be spending this kind of money going to the moon? I think to spend $10 billion to go to the moon is disgusting. They should spend on something important like jewelry. You could get <laughs> three really nice pieces of my jewelry on QVC. You've really cut what to the core of this have? issue, I think. A great ring or some stupid trip to the moon. Who gives a fuck? I couldn't care less. <laughs> Twinkle, twinkle, or twinkle, twinkle? Twinkle, uh -huh. twinkle. If they find oil on the moon, though, that's another thing. Yeah, yeah that'd so be a hell they... of a pipeline, wouldn't it? Yeah, how are they going to get it back? <laughs> well, it'd just fall down onto Earth, wouldn't it? Aren't what? they going to build some sort of cosmic escalator? So it's sport and science you're no good at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they yeah, were. Just, they were, seriously, weren't they? Uh, but they can't get through... Yeah, not into science, am I? They can't get through the Van Allen belts. There's too much radiation. Mm. Belts of radiation above the Earth's surface. That's why the cosmic elevator's going to fail. <laughs> In your face! <laughs> <laughs> No. That sounds like a boy that fancied his science teacher. Yeah, you, that could be science, or it could be the lyrics from some indie band as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if it's up there. Oh, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> right, fingers on buzzers. One more thing to get. What else have the nation been talking about? Uh, submarines. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, they want to spend 20 billion pounds on submarines full of missiles. The miss That's it. The missiles are going to be outdated by 2024. How do you know if a missile's gone off or something? Gone off? The bloody big bang out there. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> You're implying it was like milk and you'd go... <laughs> <laughs> you just farted. No, it's this scud. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, we never use any of these missiles. They're never used. They're a deterrent, aren't they? It's a shame, really. <laughs> People make these amazing, amazing missiles and nobody ever bothers to use them. <laughs> it must be very frustrating if you do make missiles and you just go, why do I bloody bother? <laughs> <laughs> these amazing, they can wipe out half the population ever. Nobody ever bloody uses them. <laughs> years making this. <laughs> Have you thought of moving to North Korea? Yeah. <laughs> 20 billion for the, the stupid moon thing and 10 billion for this stupid thing. Yeah. Such a waste of money. Well, if they took all that money, everyone would have a tiara. Imagine that. Oh, I'm for that. No, that's great. I'd rather go with the nuclear weapons. Enough yeah. people think I'm gay. <laughs> Without a fucking tiara. Jesus. Without a fucking tiara? Yeah. How often has tiara been prefixed with fucking? <laughs> you wearing my fucking tiara? <laughs> Fucking sort you out. Put my fucking tiara back in the fucking box. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if Biden is up there. <laughs> yes, it is. This is the news that the government is spending £20 billion on replacing Trident. £20 billion seems like a lot of money to spend, but it is only 10 pence for every person they're going to kill. <laughs> well, at the end of that, I can tell you Sean's team have two points and Dave's team have three points. The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. Dave, Joan and Alex, here is your first question. 40% of couples in counselling say what is a problem? Viagra. 
Oh. 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 These old guys that take Viagra. Oh, and it's good for 36 hours. You know how many orgasms you have to fake? I imagine there's a certain amount of chafing involved as well. Oh, chafing those poor old dry ladies, they'd set them on fire. <laughs> I <would> just... <laughs> <laughs> That's a painful image, isn't it? There? I imagine Sting would quite like it, though. He does 15 hours with his tantric sex. Is that what he says? Even a terrific swordsman, after six hours... Swordsman? You know, the... <laughs> Where are you from, the 17th a man... century? <laughs> yes. <laughs> a man... Snoring? Oh, you can talk. Oh, brilliant. You snore in the most monumental way, my friend. Thank That's you very sorry, much. I should explain to the viewers that um, uh, David and Dave are having an yeah. affair. <laughs> <laughs> Does it hurt not locking the bathroom door when she goes to the toilet? They go and sit on the toilet and just leave the door and keep walking in going, oh! <laughs> but what about men that leave the toilet seat up and they go all over... You know, yeah, what's the you've point? got a pointer and it's a lit room, for God's <laughs> sakes. <laughs> A woman I could understand if we were standing up with a penis because you'd be looking around, oh, I'd redecorate, you know, <laughs> so I could see what... I'll, I'll give you a clue. It's to do with computers. Watching porn on the computer. That's a correct yes. answer. <laughs> well, I'm going to this, yeah. Yes, 40% of couples in counselling say internet pornography is a problem. I think they should change the internet's name to the pornography. I was on the pornography the other day, and do you know what? You can buy train tickets on it. Brilliant. 3% <laughs> uh, of Brits would like Tom Cruise to what? Come out of the closet. <laughs> Just a joke. <laughs> and he wouldn't come out of the closet anyhow. He's short. He'd come out of a cabinet. Yes. So it's just a joke. Have uh, you met Tom Cruise? Uh, I produced a salute to him. You produced uh, a salute he, to him? He was honoured. Uh, Jimmy Stewart was honoured and uh, Gene Kelly. It was a great evening. In fact, Miss Rivers was there with her good friend Roddy McDowell. That's right. And, um, They're all dead now. They're all dead. <laughs> all dead. That must have been the catering then, was it? <laughs> <laughs> have you met Tom Cruise a few times then? I, I, I think he's here. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> he's lovely, he's very charming. What do you think 3% of Brits would like Tom Cruise to do? Make Rain Man 2 the revenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would so love that. <laughs> What happens in Rain Man? In Rain Man, he's got an autistic brother and he, he counts matches. That's the only important bit. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it turns out in the sequel, it turns out it's just luck. Every time it's 74, nobody bothers to count them. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a chance he's not autistic. <laughs> Taking the piss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these autistic people, they've had it too easy too long. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> I have two cousins that are autistic. <laughs> what are they called, David? It'd be some weird name like Clitty. Or... <laughs> Clitty and Anus. Yes, they're. Uh... He got their names right. It's Clitty and Anus. <laughs> Just came to me, Clitty. <laughs> I found it. That's how I represent before you pipe up. <laughs> that was amazing. It was on your mind. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to tell you. Three percent of Brits would like Tom Cruise to play them in a film about their life. That's a nice way of saying 3% of Brits are teeny tiny weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round, Sean, David and Alan have two points. Uh, Dave, Joan and Alex have four points. Yay! <laughs> Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is called Believe It or Not. So let's have a look at a clip to illustrate the statistic. <laughs> oh my God. You can dream you do, but you will never talk back. Look at how funky he is. <laughs> I will never be hip. I'm hot, and you're not. But if you want to hang with me, I'll give it one shot. Top that. Super Supersonic, idiotic, disconnected, not respected. Who would ever really want to go and top that? Such a waste of pretty face, but hanging in your nose face. I wish that you would take a look and really stop that. the American 80s teen movie, uh, Teen Witch. I thought it sounded kind of like public information film about twats. <laughs> <laughs> like 
warning you about. There are twats around, and this is what they look like. He's wearing the same outfit as me. <laughs> yes, there are twats in our area. Thank hey, you, see ya. Here is your related statistic. 34% of adults would rather be a teenager again than win the lottery. Do you think that's true or false? Well, I know I would never want to win the lottery. I think it's a curse to win a lottery. Right? What? Why? Well, it depends when you win it, but if you say you win it when you're sort of 40s or 50s, it means, that means that everything you've done in, the li in your life, all the work, any training, any skills, was completely pointless. <laughs> <laughs> I'd feel like an idiot if I won the lottery. Do you have the brain you have now as a teenager, or do you revert to your teenage brain? How would that make any difference to you? Well... <laughs> Sulky, no. Sulky, no. <laughs> I just want, you know, wanted just a bit of, you know, tension. <laughs> <laughs> Too much happens when you're a teenager. Too confusing. Oh my God. The first date, the first kiss, the first sex, the first drugs. I mean, that was an afternoon. I mean, it just was too fast. <laughs> <laughs> <It> just... <laughs> but I had a cousin <laughs> who won the lottery. What's her name? Chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> I think her name's Veruca Sustitis. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, tell us about Taramosolata herpes. Come on. <laughs> Why am I on the show? <laughs> I have literally no idea. I neither do I. <laughs> tell us about your cousin. Two million dollars. Won two million dollars on the lottery. Had a heart attack right there on the spot. What would you rather be, a teenager or have a heart attack? <laughs> well, I think I'll go for the teenager thing. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I once convinced my friends when I was a teenager that I bought a hoverboard in the US from Back to the Future 2. David probably sells them on a website. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he does. I'll check. <laughs> <laughs> I think this show's turned into Call My Bluff this week. <laughs> Can you go back and be a teenage girl? That's what I'd like to be. A Mexican teenage girl called Bernard. <laughs> he hasn't got legs. He's got wheels. A hovering, a hovering Mexican teenage girl called Bernard who's got no legs. My father only has one leg and my mother only has one leg, it's the truth. Really? Yeah. But one has a left leg and one has a right leg, so they're <laughs> able to conceive. Right. <laughs> so I suppose they just met. got one big belt. <laughs> 34% of adults would rather be a teenager again than win the lottery, true or false? I think it's higher. So it's false. Dave Steen, what are you guessing? We said true. OK, I can tell you the answer is false. Very good. Very good. So at the end of that round, it's three points for Sean's team and four points for Dave's team. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your first one. Worst way to be woken up. Oh. Uh, with an erection. <laughs> In your back. The sound of a peeping tom vomiting. <laughs> <laughs> David, any, any thoughts? What's the worst way you've been woken up? <laughs> Is it by a cousin? <laughs> <laughs> um, Westlife waking you up, thinking that you were actually in a coma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Is it a woman demanding money in pidgin English? <laughs> The sound of waves crashing against your plane windows. Oh. <laughs> it does involve water. Oh, well, right. Just being in the womb. Face. Water on your face is the right answer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, the worst way to be woken up is having water thrown on you. Well, surely the worst way to be woken up is Kerry Katona shaking a stick at your face and saying, it's blue. <laughs> <laughs> Top celebrity to have a night out with. <laughs> Kate Moss, because whenever you're with her, it's a white Christmas. <laughs> Is it like um, Rosie and Jim? <laughs> Are you talking about the ragdoll puppets? No, Rosie and Jim, Rosie and Jim. What are you doing watching that? <laughs> Just before Loose Women. Just before Loose, loose Women. women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to take Loose Women out with me on a night out. Why <laughs> well, wouldn't we all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Joan, I imagine you've had some stunning nights out. Uh, one of my great nights was with George Michael. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we got to see the, uh, the Hyde Park men's room at four in the morning, and it was just amazing. Did you come across any police officers? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a she. Angelina Jolie. Uh, no, that you want a night in, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Charlotte Church. Correct answer. Well done, Sean. Oh, thank you very much. Right. Yeah. Bottom of the list of celebrities to go on a night out with is Dodie Al Fayed. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, David, and Alan have four points, but tonight's winners are Dave, Joan, and Alex with five points. Oh, Thanks to all our panelists, our wonderful studio audience, and all of you for watching at home. Join us next week for a special show featuring all the best bits from the current series. See you then. Good night. To the best bits of eight out of ten cats on tonight's show: Vic Reed, John Barrowman, Nikki Graham, Louis Walsh, Alan Carr, David Guest, Lee Mack, Ulrika Johnson, Bill Adi, Michael McIntyre, and their captain, John Locke. And facing them tonight: Johnny Vegas, Joan Rivers. Jason Manford, Griff Reese Jones, Jade Goody, Alex Zane, Frankie Boyle, Boy George, Fiona Allen, Pierce Morgan, Chris Addison, and their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, here's your host, Jimmy Carr. Welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, the show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. This week we're bringing you the very best bits from the latest series. Our first round is What Are You Talking About? Every week we team up with a leading polling organisation to find out what the British nation is discussing and it's our panellist's job to guess the five most popular talking points. Uh, take that aback with the uh, Inland Revenue Tour, I think it is, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's not front page news, surely to God. It's They've got no, the Beatles have got a hit album. Oh, hang on, there's a lady going through the menopause as we speak. <laughs> That's how take that fan speak. What? Uh, news words, they just go, woo! <laughs> <laughs> how are you today? <laughs> woo hoo! <laughs> you want a cup of tea? <laughs> woo! <laughs> Why are they called to take that? What's the name mean? On their video, they had the thing saying, if you don't like it, throw it in the bin, take that. Do that again? If you don't like it, throw it in the bin, take that. That's my favourite thing you've ever said. <laughs> Those are the instructions that come with their video. Well, they said it, they said it. I promise, I watched it in my caravan with my friend. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. I imagine that was a party. <laughs> Yes, Take That have returned to the top of the charts. The reunion took longer than expected to put together because no one could remember who Howard was. <laughs> they spent six months rehearsing with a bloke from the Halifax advert. <laughs> I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. I started. <laughs> and um, gripping stuff. I was actually asked to go on. Were you? I get asked every year and I'm that far away from Panto. Excuse me. <laughs> 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 you know, would you ever think about it? I've thought about it, but in really vicious dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn up the first night, eat every bit of rice in the camp, stand there looking menacing, and then set your own camp up ten yards away going, ONE OF YOU WILL DIE TONIGHT! <laughs> I, I like David Guest. I think you he's, like him? He's great. I think he's great entertainment. Right, well, Don't you agree with that? Well, that's like, I mean, there's lots of great documentaries about Hitler. Well, I, this man's nothing like Hitler. He's done nothing wrong. He's, I, I vote for him. I want him on the Bush Tucker trial. I put him, <laughs> I'm literally I'm obsessed with seeing him repeatedly on television. I like David Guest. Is he very gay? Is who very gay? Is he very gay? Well, Michael. No, no don't do that. <laughs> well, in fairness, in fairness, you are wearing a pink shirt and saying, I love David Guest. <laughs> 
mentioning my sexuality to Jimmy. Like Jimmy knows of my sexuality. Jimmy knows. <laughs> He's definitely gay. <laughs> To, to get on this show, you have to have a medical with Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> my wife is obviously squirming uh, watching this. Thinking, He's... oh, my God, I've married a gay. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if it's there. <laughs> yes, the latest series of I'm a Celebrity started this week. Fashion designer Scott Henshaw said he tried to turn the other men in the camp gay. What, Jason Donovan, David Guest and Tommy Anstis? Good luck with that. <laughs> I saw you went straight, you cut to me after the gay joke. <laughs> he didn't. Even before you said gay, I thought, why am I on the screen? <laughs> hey, and I it's go, because... <laughs> the reason we cut to you was because some people yes. watching in Newcastle won't know what a gay man looks like. <laughs> <laughs> We think it's the fallout uh, from this KGB poisoning. The police said the, d the death was suspicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they should upgrade it to yeah. fucking suspicious. <laughs> Is he having a traditional Russian burial where they put them in a, a little coffin inside a bigger coffin, inside a much bigger <laughs> coffin? <laughs> I think you're fine, Dave. A traditional Russian burial, you have to dig your own grave. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Me, blame Stalin. <laughs> no, the series. No, we dated her because it was on the planes. Yeah. It was in a bag. Yeah. yeah. Unless they put it in TK Maxx, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> they found it yeah. a restaurant. They found it in two hotels. On a humpback whale. <laughs> <laughs> humpback whale's got a ten-foot dick, hasn't it? Sounds like the start of a song. Yeah, I was going to say. Oh, the humpback whale's got a ten-foot cock. Do da, do da. The humpback whale's got a ten-foot cock and it's so hard as a rock. That's I a think I... <laughs> This is the ongoing poisoning story. Doctors are advising anyone who's come into contact with polonium-210 to shit their liver out and then move house. <laughs> Nikki, what do you think of Madonna? She's a bit high maintenance. I like her, but to be honest, a whole week's news on her adopting the child. Oh. Who cares? <laughs> on, you're our big brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, were you looking for more news about what was going on in Kazakhstan this week? I'm not getting the bottom of this. Just Madonna, Madonna, Madonna. <laughs> But you've managed to get more attention than Madonna in a very short space of time, so you're more fabulous. Oh, thanks, Richard. On I'm a Celebrity, you claimed your maid's name was Vagina Kasiman. Is that true? <laughs> yes. Is she real? She's real. Are you sure she's I'm real? I'm positive she's as real as this set is real. <laughs> mm. <laughs> her mother, and this is the truth, her mother loved her body part so much, she said if she had a girl, she was going to name it Vaginica. Then, no, this is true, not noble. <laughs> then she married a guy named Harry Seaman. Harry Seaman. And she became Vagina Seaman. What's her middle name? I have no idea. She hasn't got a middle name. I suppose she doesn't need one, really. <laughs> Mostly when she tells, tells her name, she's probably just wiping the drink they've just spat in her face. <laughs> <laughs> <You know. laughs> but people have been talking about the fact that England lost the first test of the Ashes. What have they been saying then? Oh. Oh, he <laughs> <laughs> oh, knew it. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't play their best bowler, which is a good idea because they should, you know. Who's he then? Monty Panasar. Actually, Australia have never uh, declared independence, so technically, we always win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vic, do you watch cricket? I like the fellow with the glass eye. What okay, was it called? What was that bloke you talked about before? Who? Who up for that? That cricketer that you mentioned. Monty Panesar. Him, with the glass eye. Has <laughs> he got a glass eye? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes! I can we... prove it! You can prove it. <laughs> What's that say there? <laughs> 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 That's evidence. That's proof. Look, what does it say there? Proof. It's proof. Right. <laughs> the thing is, it's not Next him, because he's got a turban, Monty Panasar. He, he took it off on that shot. <laughs> <laughs>
Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. That's not a photo. Yeah. <laughs> what else have the nation been talking about? Uh, submarines. Whoa. <laughs> well, they want to spend 20 billion pounds on submarines full of missiles. The miss That's it. The missile's going to be outdated by 2024. How do you know if a missile's gone off or something? Gone off? The bloody big bang out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're implying it was like milk and you go... <laughs> <laughs> you just farted. No, it's this scud. <laughs> <laughs> 20 billion for the, the stupid moon thing and 10 billion for this stupid thing. Yeah. Such a waste of money. Well, if they took all that money, everyone would have a tiara. Imagine that. Oh, I'm for that. No, that's great. I'd rather go with the nuclear weapons. Enough yeah. people think I'm gay. <laughs> Without a fucking tiara. Jesus. Without a fucking tiara? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How often has tiara been prefixed with fucking? <laughs> you wearing my fucking tiara? <laughs> I'll fucking sort you out. Put my fucking tiara back in the fucking box. <laughs> Revelations in the McCartney divorce proceedings. All oh, that business rumbles oh, on, doesn't I'll it? I tell you what, I wouldn't want to be the fella that introduced them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I introduced Heather Mills to Paul McCartney. Why? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what he's asking. <laughs> Don't you think she's awful, Heather Mills? Yeah. He's Paul McCartney. You know, he wrote yesterday. She's Heather Mills. And today, a... and he'll probably write tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he's a relentless worker. <laughs> I, think the, well, I think the obvious thing, though, is, is that mostly when you meet a very beautiful woman, you assume there's a catch. There must be a catch. It can't be this good. And he thought the catch was the leg. Oh, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but this would never have happened to the Stones. None of the Stones would have ever married a one-legged nutter. <laughs> <laughs> and the one thing he said was, yeah. she threw a bottle of ketchup That's at him. Right. And he's still not got it out of his hair, has he? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that I like the way even celebrities can't have an argument without doing some product placement. You know, it's like, oh, he threw some Heinz ketchup at me, <laughs> and then he put some Marmite bottles in a sock and hit me over the head and tried to choke me with Jaffa cakes and sprayed Jiff in my eyes. <laughs> uh, Heather is going through a very rough time at the moment, and if she were here, I would tell her, time heals all wounds. <laughs> Well, not that, you'd have to be a starfish. <laughs>
uh, which is where you type fuck you into your text message and then just go through your contacts like that. <laughs> <laughs> One in five Scots say they drink because what? Because they've run out of heroin. <laughs> Five Scots said they drink because they want to. That's so close to the answer, I think I might give you that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, one in five Scots say they drink because they want to get drunk. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> of course, not all Scots are alcoholics. Some of them are ex-alcoholics. <laughs> with drug problems. <laughs> Jamie Carr is performing at this year's Glasgow Festival, mm -hmm. where he will be ripped to fucking pieces. <laughs> On their first mission, 75% of astronauts what? Never left Earth. <laughs> Do you think they landed on the moon? Do you think that's a genuine thing? Nah. Well, you can see the shadows of the photos. Well, there's proof if ever we needed it. Oh, so. <laughs> And the flag's flying. The flag's oh. flying? Oh. There's wind, but there's wind on the moon. The moon's very windy. Oh, the he's been there. The moon is not windy. Yes, it is very windy. It is not it's windy. windy. Oh, Otherwise, oh, oh, oh. they'd Let's have built this. a windmill up there oh, or something like that. I'm prepared to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the hardest man in England on this one. <laughs> it's bloody windy up there. Wind? Wind is no, air blowing around, you yeah. see. <laughs> it's air blowing about. That's why yeah. yeah. wind That's on the why it comes in your face the moon. air. Of course there's but air there on, the moon, air on the moon, India. Fucking shut up! I can't believe I'm playing you an eight four on. All right, you know what? Okay. Easy. Yeah. yeah, I think we've upset Fiona. Let's no. all just take a moment. Right. There's air. There's no oxygen on the moon. Oh, there is air. It just hasn't got any oxygen in it. And it What's gets it made of, then? Yogurt? What's, What's it made of, then? Yogurt? What's it made of, then? Other stuff! <laughs> <laughs> you would make the best science professor in the world. <laughs> Other stuff! <laughs> Moony <Moody> air! <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. Just for fun, one of them goes... Tss, can anyone hear that? <laughs> <laughs> I bet at least one of them goes, are we there yet? <laughs> it's taken ages. <laughs> but you didn't have to do that in a northern accent. Yeah, I did because I was trying to be stupid. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Three percent of Brits would like Tom Cruise to what? Come out of the closet. <laughs> Just a joke. <laughs> the closet anyhow he's sure he come out of a cabinet yeah. so it's just a joke have you met tom cruise a few times though i i think he's here <laughs> uh, yes <laughs> he's lovely he's very charming what do you think three percent of brits would like tom cruise to do make rain man to the revenge <laughs> yes. i would so love that <laughs> what happens in rain man in rain man He's got an autistic brother, and he, he counts matches. That's the only important bit. Yeah. <laughs> I have two cousins that are autistic. <laughs> what are they called, David? Be some weird name like Clitty. Or... <laughs> oh, Clitty and Anus. So, yes, they're... <laughs> they got their names right. It's Clitty and Anus. <laughs> just came to me. Clitty. <laughs> I found it. That's how I represent the you pipe up. <laughs> that was amazing. It was on your mind, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. Let's have a look at a clip to illustrate the statistic. Suda, I don't seem to have an email from you again. Really? I sent it at three. Well, it's not here. I don't understand. I sent it. I thought you wrote down how to do it. Yes. Well, perhaps you wrote it wrong with your dyslexia and... or. Oh. Is there? That was a clip from a training video for office managers. If you've got dyslexia, there is a number you can call, but pointless giving it to you, you might be able to write it down, will you? <laughs> um, <coughs> your related statistic, 16% of bosses have made a decision based on their horoscope. Do you think that's true or false? It's all bollocks. Apart from the magpies, obviously. I see two magpies, haven't that's you? That's typical you're in the shit. <laughs> Well, hang on, you must see two magpies every day, surely. Uh, several. Would you call yourself lucky? Absolutely. Every time I go past a building site, somebody goes... 
like you. Come on, then you get hey, lucky. Bill! Bill, come here! <laughs> I want to make love to you, Bill! I don't think it's ever happened before, but I imagine this weekend it's going to be happening a lot. <laughs> Builders, if you're watching, please. For us. <laughs> Can you make bird noises? I don't Some know. of them, yeah. I would like a chaffinch. Yeah. No, chaffinch, all right. It, it's like a fast bowler running up, and so he goes... That's you know. Kondo. No, he comes up. <laughs> boom, 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 Well, that, that's what the, the bird makes, that noise. <laughs> Did Bill just stand up, then? Amazing, that's extraordinary. A man actually gets out of his seat and is smaller than when he was sitting down. <laughs> Bill Oddie, I've had it up to here. <laughs> have you really had Bill Oddie up to there? <laughs> <laughs> you bloody haven't. Yeah, I used to work on a building site late. 34% of adults would rather be a teenager again than win the lottery. Do you think that's true or false? Too much happens when you're a teenager. Too confusing. Oh my God. The first date, the first kiss, the first sex, the first drugs. I mean, that was an afternoon. I mean, it just was too fast. <laughs> <It> just... <laughs> but I had a cousin. <laughs> Who won the lottery? What's her name? Chlamydia? <laughs> I think her name's Veruca Sustainers. <laughs> Come on, tell us about Taramo Salata Herpes. Come on. <laughs> Why am I on the show? <laughs> I have literally no idea. I neither do I. Can you go back and be a teenage girl? That's what I'd like to be. A Mexican teenage girl called Bernard. <laughs> she hasn't got legs, she's got wheels. A hovering, a hovering Mexican teenage girl called Bernard who's got no legs. My father only has one leg and my mother only has one leg, it's the truth. Really? Yeah. But one has a left leg and one has a right leg, so they're <laughs> able to conceive. Right. <laughs> so I suppose they just met. got one big belt. <laughs> is the name of our final round. I'm going to be giving the teams a series of opinion polls and surveys. It's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Top reason to celebrate. I know! Jesus Christ, don't do that! <laughs> <laughs> oh, try to laugh at me. It's a funeral. <laughs> it's a no, I tell you Unbelievable. Why. Do you only go to funerals of people you don't like? <laughs> <laughs> I've been to one. <laughs> I've never been invited back. Oh, I've been to one funeral, I didn't get invited back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, believe you so same job again next back. year then. <laughs> the biggest worry for farmers. Is it like being asleep at night and a, the scarecrow tapping on your window? <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> me and you outside. <laughs> I'm just going to put my killing head on. <laughs> Britain's favourite noise. Is it that honking noise that women's breasts make when you go out? <laughs> <laughs> that last one was Jordan. <laughs> Is it a... That's the biggest hit I've ever seen. <laughs> OK, celebrity most in need of a makeover. Cherie Blair. <laughs> I think probably the most honourable thing I would do is I bought some pictures of Cherie Blair topless off the market and didn't publish them. There are just some things oh, you can't... Well, you thanks. just kept them for yourself, you <laughs> dirty <laughs> stuff. Well, they did one on Anne Widdicombe, didn't they? That was, that was fantastic, obviously. But it's pointless, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> it's like sprinkling glitter on dog shit, isn't it? <laughs> Best way to become famous? Is it, is it sleeping with Simon Cowell? Is that how you did it? No, that's not... <laughs> <laughs> Thing most likely to make men cry? Speaking for the older generation, <laughs> I would have to say that it's accepting that your daughter's friends simply think of you as her dad. <laughs> so you're crying because you can't fuck your daughter's friends? <laughs> the most honest answer we've ever had on this show. Great image, isn't it? I'm just so good up to Bill Oddie, you go, oh, you must be Joanne's dad. <laughs> <laughs> OK, 
welcome to Spring Watch. I've got some binoculars. I'm in a shed. <laughs> My daughter's having a sleepover. <laughs> Should be a hell of a show. <laughs> Well, that is the end of the show. Thanks to all our fantastic panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it for now, but 8 Out of 10 Cats will be back next year. We'll see you then.